Friends, fans, and fine folk, grab your drinks and snacks and come on down to short rest around the campfire with me, Robert Hartley, and my friends. God, I always go the wrong way. This way, <laughs> Mudcat and and Caustic. How are you guys going? It's us. <laughs> Every hey. single time, without fail, I go this, this side. side for some reason. You can't see us. Which way am I supposed to go? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're kind of between us, Mudcat, so you can go both oh, ways. Oh, so I can. You can. Yeah. You, can this, just... you can do this thing. There's no wrong it. answer. <laughs> no wrong answer for you. I can touch everyone. When the host goes the wrong way, we can also go the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> it would be much easier if we were actually like a late night TV show, and I <laughs> and I actually had some chairs. I've got a couch on this side of me. I should just think couch, window. Yeah. This is where my my guests are sitting. There we go. Perfect. We'll just we'll just get a plane ticket. We'll just make, do it in person and make it easier. Yeah, make it a you lot easier. You don't have the budget for, for that? Come on. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we've blown it on Aviva Studio, so don't have the, <laughs> the budget for anything else. Yep. Uh, welcome in, everybody. Line, maybe you could. Yeah. Starting off strong. Thanks. Um, so welcome in everybody, uh, welcome along, welcome to my friends Mudkit and Caustic here. Um, we're going to be talking today about D&D. &D. If anybody is new to this, this is a series I do called Short Rest, where I just chat with somebody from the community. Uh, so because we are having a short rest, let's let's set up the short rest. What do you think we are in the midst of? Why do we need a short rest? Are we on like a heist mission, or are we on like a, a long trek through the desert, or what's, 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 it, what's the situation? Listen, we are at the peak before our final battle. It's that calm before Ooh. the storm, right outside the mountainous castle. We've that's just gone out through all distance. of the dungeon. We're like all yeah, beat up yeah. and we've lost a bit of hit points <sighs> and tried to conserve our spell slots as much as possible. But we're just like, right, yeah. let's roll some more hit dice. <sighs> all one right, last, one last short rest. Get the fighter is yeah, second win yeah. back. Check I'm in the up. corner uh, forging a will for all of the party members. <laughs> in the event of their death, I get all of their stuff. Do you, do you, do you, do you keep it in like a Leoman's tiny chest as well, so that nobody can, yeah, yeah, nobody absolutely. can forge it but you. And, Fireproof. Uh, and 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 where are we? Are we like up in the mountains? You say? Are we like? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, Overlooking a, another mountain mountainous pass. range. Yes. Yes. Nice. What are we? It's a cool, calm air, but not snowy. Just dead. Everything's dead all around us. <laughs> <laughs> are we are we are we uh have we got a campfire going or are we in a cold cave or what are we, no, in we can't have a campfire tiny hut? then they'll they'll see us coming yeah uh, so, right. Obvi no obviously. campfire we're just freezing just freezing yes. on a mountain we're just, just freezing can't feel on our the, fingers on the mountain, the short rest our knobby knees are shaking <laughs> just, like old men i'm getting got arthritis. i'm getting i'm gonna be really ready for this this fight have, fight we have one <laughs> cold can of beans that we're all sharing <laughs> Isn't this like the Black final beans. fight of the campaign? How, how, are yeah, we not, yeah. how are we not more powerful than this? We used all of our power to get here. No, we don't have any. Ma we're all martial class. We're all martial classes. Nobody's got any magic at all. Right. It's fine. Wonderful. Well, this is going to be a fun uh, short rest, then, isn't yeah. it? Um, yeah. yeah. Cold, cold can of beans. We're ready for this. <laughs> we're ready for we're ready for anything. Recovers one hit point. <laughs> not even a hit die. One one is not dead though. Yeah, I mean it could come down to having one hit point rather than two. It's definitely I've definitely had that recently. In fact, in a game I ran yeah. on Tuesday, um, it was an almost TPK closest stuff come in a while. I had two player character deaths, and if you know my style oh. of gameplay, that's very rare. I very rarely have any player character deaths, and I had two of them um, because they took on a. Ba it was basically a big buddy. It was a recurring villain from the campaign. Two of them, in fact, him and his henchmen, and they're like both pretty big bosses, and they got the drop on them, <laughs> and then they just gave the gave the element of surprise up by walking up to him and trying to parlay <laughs> and this was a conversation this <laughs> and this was well the boss the two bosses are like super you know they're full fully health because they're in the middle of their evil plan trying to do so their machinations and the, and my players are, are like half health because they've just gone through trials and tribulations to get here and then they just try parlay and he just tears off a necklace of fireballs and casts uh, a, a sixth level fireball on the party and just t knocks two <laughs> knocks three of them to zero immediately <laughs> you know that, that oh, i was that like it's not the best me. not the best planning guys that sounds to me like you have perfectly traumatized them to the fact that uh, or to the to point where they don't know if they're supposed to attack when they have the element <laughs> of surprise, or if they're supposed to parlay. Yeah, because somewhere in the, somewhere in the past, they, you know, they've, gotten <laughs> they've tried the to attack for... and then gone. We shouldn't do that in the future. We'll try and parlay. Right. And they always choose the wrong option. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, thank, thankfully, uh, thankfully, the druid was in wild shape, and so he, oh. with the fireball damage, was taken out of wild shape. The carryover damage took him to one hit point, so he was left standing and could cast cure wounds on the cleric, who could then try and re- and so they managed to avoid a, 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 a TPK because of it. But yeah, that one hit so point. So it's like can a make domino a healing effect. Yeah, <laughs> I if I heal you, you, you heal him. Others. You heal the fighter. He second wins, and then he attacks. Yeah. Um, so I like to usually start with like talking about names. So where did D20 Deathmatch come from? It's pretty self-explanatory, but for those who don't know what your <laughs> content is... <laughs> it was the one that was available on all platforms. <laughs> well, okay. So, but it was a long, it was a longer process than just looking at Twitter. We got lucky that it was available yeah. on all platforms, but we, uh, we went through a number of names. And <clears throat> I think one of the, the earliest ones was... Dungeons and Dice and Death Matches, which is one of our taglines now. D3. But, so we could so we could call it, you know, the triple duh. <laughs> Just to be dumb. Oh, yeah. Triple duh, 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 duh. <laughs> Welcome to duh, duh, duh. <laughs> You can tell <laughs> high intelligence <laughs> between <laughs> the two of us. Yeah, very we good had, marketing had, strategies. What's honestly, the longest a... possible name that we could get so that it won't yeah. fit on any handles? Yes. We had a... Uh, we had a... A piece of plexiglass that well that we've had for years it's mostly for drinking games for writing the rules down but no, fairness, in this case, i used it first for my master's paper but sure. <laughs> okay since then okay. since then it's been for drinking games but then we decided yeah. to break it out and kind of brainstorm this show and we had a list of names i don't remember all of them but uh, at some point it wasn't even in the first round of names i think it was just randomly either you or me thought of d20 deathmatch and i'm like Oh yeah, that's a really good name. Why didn't we think of that before? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, I would have thought that it was one of the first things you came up with because it's so, it's it's pithy. It's to the point. It explains immediately what you look, what you're going to get into. People who hear it go, I I know what that content's about, even if they don't. <laughs> but no, it's, it was a it was a long long way down the list. Was it like round give three? Me the, yeah. Give me some of the other ones. High what intelligence was, between the two. What, of were, us. You, what were what were some of your your others that hit no, the cutting room? We we were really stuck on having three. Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> We really, we, we were, were really sold we on really, that for a while. It was really a terrible the, idea looking back mind. at it. You got we just thought it was really fun to say. It was da 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 da. We, I can't remember. It was, it was always this something to do. embarrassing to share. It was always something to do with death matches or death yeah. match. There was always some yeah. sort of death match in there. And for for me, one of the big influences of our show is celebrity I death match. I was just about so, to say, I bet, I bet because of celebrity death match. Yeah, and so for the fact kid. that... The fact that we couldn't get to D twenty death match right away, yeah, uh, is surprising. <laughs> but there was always death match in Dungeons there. Dungeons and dragons and dice and D twenty death match. It's gonna be something like that. And well, DMs. I, and DMs. <laughs> DMs and I mean, the funny and... D. The, the the funny thing is uh, the group, same group that I was just talking about the uh, the one that I DM'd on Tuesday. Um, their uh, their party name for a long time until I came up with something. Uh, it was unofficially uh, D D D D and D, because that one of the <laughs> one of the NPCs that they yeah. one of the beloved NPCs they screwed up something they missed a bunch of like insight checks and they missed that a couple of town guards were actually like from the Assassins Guild in disguise, um, and so when they came back this uh, this this NPC called Dingo had hanged himself allegedly they'd actually the guards had actually done it and framed him but they an npc died because of them and they felt really bad about it and so they and so i started calling them the the dead dingo's disciples <laughs> 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 and so they became oh. dead dingo's disciples D and so they became the the, the quintuple d so the uh so you know we came up with the we came up with the name and it originally was that that Dungeons and Dice and Death Matches, which we still use in, in the show and the tagline yeah. just mm-hmm. as a callback to that, which nobody knows until now. But uh, we also have a, a kind of a, a second Easter egg from that name is, you know, we came up with that name and, and right away, we didn't come up with D20 Deathmatch right away, but right away we came up with our, our community, wanted them to be called Acolytes. Right. And at the, the, the beginning, we were going to call them Acolytes of the Double Ampersand. Right. Because right. of the D&D. 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 So they are still called that, whether they know it or not. Yeah, <laughs> like, just in the secret. Blimps. That's good. I, like I didn't it. realize how much of our brainstorming was stupid until you say it out loud on a stream. <laughs> down <the> right. <laughs> the bra- brain dump. So, on, on the on the same topic of names, though, where did uh, where did Mudcat and Co- and Caustic Phoenix come from? 
You want to go first? Oh, me? Sure. You know, oh, I pointed you to you. Oh, go, I can't. Go. Stop. Which way? Go. Uh, <laughs> so for, for me, Mudcat was actually a, a nickname I got in high school um, from a few of my best friends who we went to a, a Cleveland Indians game and saw some old guy uh, who had the, the nickname Mudcat, and they literally looked at me and just were like, we're going to call you that. And that was... <laughs> That was the end of that, and I did. They just have been calling me that for, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 years now. So were just you ch- were stuck. you chasing mice through the soil at the time? Like what, what, why? No, a mud cat's <laughs> actually a catfish, like a is a, oh, is a type okay. of fish, but uh, it has nothing. It's very to do, ugly. You know, it really was nothing to do with that on my end. They just were like, we're just going to call you that because they saw it. And it's I was a very like, ugly fish that very lives, ugly. In, okay. lives in the slop. <laughs> and you were like, so thanks, friends. Not much of an exciting name. And then, you know, just use it as a gamer tag and everything else. And yeah. Just kind of just kind of stuck. Fair enough. And Caustic Phoenix. My gamer tag was originally very sleepy owl. But when I was doing raids, it was hard to call out. Turns out, like, owl, owl. is not that much. Yeah. Owl is not <laughs> yeah. fun to say. No. Like, I got to change it. So I, I have half Asian roots. And so I especially uh, with the phoenix. That was a particular fable, mythical creature that I loved. Mm-hmm. But there were a million phoenixes yeah. on social media and especially on Twitch. And I'm like, I can't do that. So I went the Pokemon route, like with Eevee. And I just went through different elements. I'm like, okay, not fire, <laughs> not ice. Love then it. I went to acid, acid. I was looking in the thesaurus. I'm like, caustic acid is fun phoenix. to say. Caustic. Yeah. So- and it's got that so kind of caustic with. phoenix. It's kind of like assonance in yeah. between the, the ick at the end. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Stuff. And so it sounded really good. So I went with the Phoenix because I liked it, and then I enjoyed the way Caustic sounds. <laughs> so I paired the two. Yeah. Caustic Phoenix. And then and then and- on Twitter, on Twitch rather, there there was already one, and so you stood, stuck an X at the front, or? <laughs> yeah. So I'm a mixer baby. I was there first, and I didn't uh... have the foresight to be like, oh, I'll need to be on Twitch one day. Yeah. And then mixer went. <laughs> Uh, so then I had to come over here and somebody already had it and they're not even active. They're yeah, that's the active. worst thing. Yeah, that's the worst thing. I remember when I, I remember when I first got onto Twitter and there was another Robert Hartley and I was like, well, when did they last post? <laughs> Seven years ago. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What are you Who doing? are you? Speaking, speaking, of, of, uh, how did, speaking of, how'd you get your name, Rob? Uh, so my my name had a lot of thoughts. It wasn't actually the first thing I came up with either. Um, I, uh, you'd, you'd have thought that it, it was 17 down the list. Uh, I went with I went with Jeremy Irons. Um, apparently, that's taken by oh. a uh, taken, famous, yeah. famous actor. Yeah. Apparently, you'd have thought I've known uh, that. I went. I was like, "Oh, De Niro sounds cool," and so I was like, "Robert De Niro." Ooh. And then apparently, that was already taken as well. So I don't know. Mm. Weird. I've never I heard of that guy. Sorry. Went down the list, and eventually, I was like, "Hey, wait, my name is Robert and Hartley. Let's use Robert Hartley, and then GM." <laughs> So when I, when I actually started, it was Robert Hartley DM, and then I very quickly remembered, oh, I don't want to, I, I want to future fr- future proof myself, in case I'm not uh, stuck to D and D forever, uh, and and so I uh, made it GM. In case people really? imply the wrong kind of dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is very it is very fun to uh, to when people ask me in my real life like what I do for a living, and I try and explain it. It's bizarre. <laughs> like I'm a full time dungeon master, and then some. Yeah, depending on who I'm talking to, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> no context. I'll be like, I'd, I'm a dungeon master, and then like maybe uh, maybe I entertain adults for a living online, <laughs> <laughs> and wink and walk away. <laughs> Ooh, so I make, no, no, it's not what you think. I just I just act out fantasies. Yeah. Here, here's I'm, a link to my website in I'm case in the, you want to check it out later. <laughs> I'm in the fantasy genre. I live stream. People give me money on for for mm-hmm. doing things online. Yeah. My it can get pretty vicious pay sometimes. To, pay me to punish them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they call me a bit of a sadist, sadist, but they come back. Um, what about your logos? Where, where did they come from? Because this is pretty amazing. Over here and over there. This way. Gotcha. Oh yeah, yes. The, so, the logos. Yes, we knew that we wanted to take a lot of visual inspiration from He-Man, uh-huh. like the 80s ballad yeah, color so. scheme as well. So, and it actually turned out right when we did our first season, He-Man came back out around that same time. So it was like this perfect <laughs> revival of style that we yeah. absolutely love. We're like, we want bright colors, we want intensity because our dream is to always have this eventually be a live show. Like people all around, we want this to be yeah. in a ring 
WWE yeah. rock concert light shows <laughs> everywhere. So we wanted to lean in that from the very beginning so that we're on that pathway. And we knew, of course, like the badass skull with the broken tooth on there. It gave it yes. more of that fantasy feel. Mm. Yeah, I love it. And yeah. who, who did we, it for uh, you, this, these, uh, this badass skull? So this was, uh, at the time, they were high score uh, tees, high score designs. Um, but the, the person who um, created it was the owner of that, um, Corey Thomas. And you can... I'm not sure what his Twitter ad is. I got to remember, but um, he he is actually someone we met through. Uh, he was opening a merch uh, website and we were doing our merch through him for a long time. Um, he is a background in like doing um, uh, concert tees for like bands. So right, for right. name name any popular band, uh, he's got really uh, popular Fortnite t-shirts that are for sale in Target and stuff like, you know, so he's, uh, a, yeah. he's a designer for and you, you Disney, met him for you... Marvel. Um, how did you get to know? He actually uh, approached me after watching uh, Sea of Thieves streams. Oh, wow. Because um, he was in the Sea of Thieves community, and, mm -hmm. and he'd been watching the stream for a while. And, and kind of like sometimes, you know, I, I don't know how often you get this, but occasionally uh, when you have a larger stream or an audience, sometimes people will jump into your DMs and be like, hey, do you need a design or do you need a whatever? Mm -hmm. And they'll yeah. try to approach you. And usually yeah. it's, you know, it's just some random person with no yeah. portfolio, no nothing. Uh, so I kind of thought that this was that when he approached me. Yeah. And then he was like, I was like, okay, send me a portfolio. And he's like, <laughs> okay. And then, and then he sent it and he's got all these like uh, Led Zeppelin and Metallica <laughs> designs. He's done like Coheed and Cambria. I'm like, some, yeah. holy shit. Can you send me a, send me a portfolio? Yeah, send me a portfolio. And he sends it and you're like, I think you've sent the wrong thing. This file is too large right. for my computer to download. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hold on here. <laughs> it was Why is very this seven good. gigabytes? <laughs> yeah, he's a great designer. And so, uh, you know, we were working with him on other stuff. And um, so we approached him to this. So uh, and he pretty much nailed the skull the first time. I think we had one revision on it. Uh, we, yeah. we said it, it doesn't look mean enough, I think, was the first. He, it was a little softer <laughs> right, yeah. originally. And, like, and, it, and he's like, yeah, but uh, skulls don't have eyebrows, so they can't look. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, I, I don't care, damn it. I did it. <laughs> As soon as we uh, as actually, what was the what was the cartoon that it looked like originally? Uh, oh, okay, you remember the with the Grim mm -hmm. Reaper cartoon with the oh, kids? Uh, Amanda, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, Mandy and Billy, yeah. Billy and Mandy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's so, in the recesses of my brain somewhere. The yeah. first yeah. the first that's iteration it. looked a lot like not I won't say exactly like that, but had when I saw it, I was like, wait, it looks like that cartoon kind of yeah. very similar Around softer it, features. Um, and I was like, hey, or we both were kind of like, uh, can we make it's this look cute. a little, a little meaner? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, cause he, he does, fighting to the death. Let's, right. he does a lot of metal. Right. He does a lot of metal and rock concert yeah. t-shirts. So he knew exactly what we meant. He's like, oh yeah. I, after I told him the cartoon, he's like, now I can't unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then so. you, um, and then for the, uh, D20 death match, uh, word logo that's that that was that looks to me that's like oh that's metallica that's like a it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's something yeah. something like that you were just like hey give us something rock we just said we wanted a word logo and he slung yeah. that to us and you were like yeah. yep that that'll was, do it that was <laughs> it your talent <laughs> yeah awesome. he's got to, he's got that background in, in a lot of that metal style though awesome. um so he's well versed in it good good person to find to do it Sure. So, uh, so for anyone who is newer to my community and hasn't seen me as Cosmonius on your channel uh, and doesn't actually know what it is that D Twenty Deathmatch does, um, give us a give us a uh, summary. What's your elevator pitch? What 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 is it you do of your your channel? Sure. So we do D and D PvP in a ridiculous format based on telling epic stories during battle. So many times we hear that. We can either get RP or we could get good battles. Here we do a two hour show where we bring both together, yeah. creating insane characters from all different types of backgrounds and timelines where we get to explore just the craziness that we can build within this world. <laughs> so two hours long, we get a 10 minute half show within it. We've got our wonderful Arbiter, who's our rule master, and I am the Grand Master, who hosts our weekly arena battle fights in a PvP to the death most of the time. <laughs> Wonderful. It's like you've done that before. Um, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it, it is incredible. I've, I've been a guest on there twice now, coming up. Twice, three. yeah. At least. We've, got a, we've got a third one coming up yes. at some point. Yes. 
Yeah. With a brand new character this brand time. Character. Mm. Yes. It'll be a different nice. format than you're used to, though. It's I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's it's one of our Shut auxiliary up. formats, <laughs> and it's it's very fun. Shut up. I'm getting the shush. I'm gonna have to mute you. Um, it's gonna be it's very exciting, and uh, and I can say hand on heart, it's it's a fantastically well run show because I've I know from experience that PvP in D and D is not always uh, conducive to a good time. Like um, it's not made for <laughs> PvP. It's not it's a game that is not balanced around PvP. The classes are meant to fill in for one another's weak points, uh, but PvP is about exploiting each other's weak points, and uh, as soon as you can do that, as soon as one of you's got an a- advantage and uses one of your many OP things that you have, uh, mm-hmm. as every, every class is, is OP in their own right, which is kind of what makes the game balanced when you're working as a team. But if you're OP and exploiting other people's weaknesses, then <clears throat> it's it, it, it just can very quickly lead to somebody dying immediately. Um, but the way you run it is so fantastic that you you have it's a it's a fluid thing and the gra- and if somebody does start to get uh start to get annihilated early there's there's things that the grandmaster and the arbiter can do to uh, to rebalance the scales and there's random effects that can happen based on the hype trains and things and it's it, it's so well done uh with such a focus on the storytelling and the role play and the and the the entertaining show aspect that uh it feel it generally does feel like you're in the middle of WWE or something and you're not uh, you're not just going to go out there and boom, rock bottom somebody and then do your finisher <laughs> right from the very beginning. Um, yeah. uh, unless there's obviously that's the, the purpose of it. But but yeah, you're, you're going to give up, put on a show and then and then end with something finale. Um, yeah. and, it, and you really the reason, capture it very well. Yeah. The reason why I think it works is one, we tell people right off the bat, it's inherently unfair. Yeah. So don't come, you know, planning <laughs> to hit the rules out there. Don't come to smash it. We won't yeah, allow. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't happen. We don't care half the time what the rules are. We change it within the moment or what works or what makes sense or what's going to be funny for us. And more importantly, it's not about winning or losing, really. It's about telling a really fun story. Like tell like if yeah. die, go for it, but <laughs> die in the most epic way possible. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's ultimately what you want to do, because a lot of these characters are only going to be one shot anyway. Yeah. So give them the mm-hmm. best possible ending that you can. <laughs> so I have been on there a couple of times and where can people find that when they want to watch if they if they are new to my thing? Where do, where do they find my uh, my episodes? And they want to watch me as being a oh. centaur monk. They can uh, they can go catch the the uh, vods over on youtube.com slash d20 deathmatch. It's, and it's very good. Uh, yeah. I won't. I won't spoil it. But yes, I. Uh, I. I. The, it does end in a very good way, especially that first one that I was in with uh, with Dag. And, it, and I'm we. Trying to, I'm trying and to remember the it. name. I think what was the name of the first episode? A gift horse, I believe. Yeah. Was gift, the name of it. Yes. Yes. I don't. Yeah, an ass I, on an ass, and I was on top that's of the a season, donkey. Too. That's yeah, the season that's one, and then season <laughs> two, you're in. Uh, not the, the last episode, second to last, right? Yeah. Uh, I think... yes, I think so. Yeah. So I can't remember what the, it was the battle for the crown episode two, I think. So I, I highly recommend people a lot going of the to watch TikToks. them. Yeah. I was, I was about to say, like, I, I was going to get onto that as well. Like, so you, uh, where did you get this, the idea for D20 deathmatch? You, you were just inspired right from the beginning that this is the sort of content you wanted to make or did you, were you like, uh... I want to make something <laughs> actual play, but there's just so many actual plays out there. What, what was the, so it's, a. Uh... Our whole content creation journey is a is a process, but I, I personally have been streaming since 2013 um, in one form or another. We've both been on Mixer and then back to Twitch. And, um, and you know, I personally was like a Sea of Thieves partner, mostly streaming Sea of Thieves. Uh, I decided to change my content at one point <clears throat> to do kind of this detective noir thing. Um, and... So I've got all this brand new stuff. I'm redoing my channel. I'm changing everything about my entire brand and, you know, throwing out of the window everything I've been doing for the last seven years. Um, and at the same time, I well, start Can I, can I having... ask why? Like, what was the... Were you just bored of Sea of Thieves or was something... Yeah, I was happened? real bored. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like, this isn't entertaining to me. I, I no. So I guess this ties in. I, I just... I wanted to create things that were fun to watch hmm. um, and different and unique. Um, and I wanted to kind of push the, my boundaries a little bit rather than just sit and play Sea of Thieves. I wanted to do something that was entertaining for me. Right. Um, and so I was like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just, um, <clears throat> but around that same time where I'm changing all this stuff on my personal stream, I start throwing out 
<clears throat> these auxiliary ideas of like, oh, you know what I want to do in the spring? I want to, I want to do this show and I want to do this show. And then we've been talking about doing a and D show for a while. Uh, we didn't really have any ideas. Had you been playing D and D for a while by that point? Yeah, we had been playing D and D with Captain Robear since 2017, 2018 right, right, right. on his channel. Um, but I, uh, I at one point I came to Cossack and said, uh, "Oh, I have this idea for a podcast. It's like D and D meets WWE." I didn't really get too much further past that because mm. she stopped me immediately and was like, "Hey, you're uh, you're changing everything about everything, and you're already like." swamped with shit uh maybe we just don't you know make 10 <laughs> new ideas at once which is something i do <laughs> you sound like dreaded gm mm. right <laughs> so no fast... half-assing ideas no Stick with right a few only full those. assing <laughs> yeah only so fast forward a little bit and that's a little long-winded story but fast forward a little bit Good uh time. in the spring uh caustic uh, you know, I'm doing my thing, and she approaches me. And she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna do that D and D wrestling show uh, thing." I'm like, "The oh, fuck you are!" <laughs> Without me, no way. So I, like, I, I look, the capacity. You do look. You're doing too many things. Stick with stick with one thing, okay? Just but like, what was your idea exactly? I, I th just just so that we can come back to it later. I'm sure. Well, and and you know, like I said, I had a general idea, and but I, I yeah. so I strong armed my way back into the project. <laughs> uh, she wanted to do it alone at first and i was like ah, i can't i gotta i gotta because it was such a good idea and then from there so like you know i had the general like wwe pvp and mm -hmm. then from there like she really did a lot of the organizing because i'm terrible at sitting down and like writing and brainstorming right. and stuff yeah. so she then pushed us forward into like okay what does this thing look like and mm. you can take over from there if you want sure then it <laughs> We wanted to actually do a lot of test plays, trying different game plays, what worked, what didn't work. Because as you mentioned, like D and D is not yeah. meant for PvP. Yeah. Like it's it's completely unfair. And especially when you start mixing like our our martial classes against magic, yeah. it it becomes a mess. And what do we do with items? How do we change yeah. it up? How does it become unique? What are our roles? And so I I got a notebook and I, I wrote every single idea down. And then the next day I would reorganize all the ideas into different pages, the rules we had, the background stories, the items. And <laughs> then I'd come back to him and I would present them again. And I'd say, let's talk through these yeah. section by section to flush them out. So I, I guess I kind of took on more of the manager role <laughs> and Mudcat has such great ideas to bring them along. And being able to see them written down allowed him to kind of flourish that a little bit more yeah. and grow from that without kind of forgetting where we started from. <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm definitely more of a, <clears throat> an idea person. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm really good at coming up with ideas and then I'm really good about executing the technical aspects of them. Like, you know, OBS and yeah. Yeah. those kind of things but you got it term... yeah backgroundy sort of thing right yeah i i don't i just have been using no it i've been streaming like since it. 2013 it's just right. been a you just know it i just joke learning. he's my it guy <laughs> you just know it because of experience yeah. yeah okay but uh you know she she's really good about um getting organized and and you know projects don't happen without somebody who's actually going to do the organization yeah. and like figure That's out sense. what does this thing look like and then also she's really good about you know, uh, curbing my bad ideas. Uh, cause I'm like, let's just have a bloody death pit guar, people slaughtering each other in the streets. And she's like, well, maybe we just dial it back a little bit. <laughs> let's have some fun in there a little bit more. Let's, let's be a little, a little more whimsical than that. <laughs> a little bit of whimsy in there. So, yeah. so yeah. How, roughly how long ago was all of that? And how long between your conception of the idea to actually the first match? From when we actually... <laughs> When I said I was going to start doing it, uh, I would say we actually put it in progress for about five months. You say, my cat? Uh, okay. We had so the idea for we over started, a year. We started last, yeah. our first day was last September, 2021, September 12th. Yeah. Um, we began playtesting in June or July. Hmm. Um, and so I think we I think we kind of had the idea maybe to to push it forward in maybe like March or something, March April, and then kind of just with our schedules we didn't get down around to sitting down to play test and like you know Caustic made our initial overlays for the play tests and all you know our initial assets before we had official assets, 
so we can mock up a stream and all that stuff and getting the tech together. Um, once once we got rolling and knew what we wanted to do and she made the overlays, uh, we went from zero to uh, having an entire stream built out almost as like what it is today mm -hmm. um, in like less than a less than two days, maybe. Um, yeah. I, you know, yeah, once she gave me all the assets and, yeah. and then we... Uh, <clears throat> And then we play tested for a couple of months, uh, July, August, and then launched in in September. So, so it was before yeah. that we actually went to a, a tavern. We've got well, it's a restaurant called Cloak and Blaster here in Florida that we would go to because you know support your local game stores, and we would <laughs> we would drink and we would play different classes and different levels to figure out okay what things are broken, what yeah. levels do we play yeah, at? Like can we do it at it, a level it's twenty? Big thing, yeah. Yeah. Can we do it at level three? Can we do it at level 20? When does that become fair or unfair? Are there certain <laughs> Can items? we do it at level 20 and just yeah. exclude Druid? Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Instead, totem of the bear. And exclude the like, totem of bear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or, or, yeah. So, what things can we allow? What they don't allow? And also, like, how long does it take? Because we knew we wanted a slightly shorter show. Yeah. We knew two hours was going to be the yeah. max. Can we make it last two hours? Can we make it last consistently? Mm -hmm. And so we did a lot of drinking and a lot of playing there <laughs> for research yeah. purposes. <laughs> for research. Yeah, research. Yeah. You can put, it, it's yeah, a great put way all to... of your expenses as, an ex yeah. as a work expense. Yes. <laughs> it's a great way to... Even though we uh, had no budget then. <laughs> it's a great way to, uh, you know, to, to test new characters, mm -hmm. you know, since we... Even if you're just doing it for the purpose of, like, you know, let me see how this character plays. Yeah. You know, getting down, sitting down with a friend and just one v oneing. Um. You know, and having that that uh, agreement that you're not going to swing for the fences round one. You're going to yeah. kind of test it a Easy bit. And, it. Yeah. Um. And I mean, that's and a great I way to get used bucket? to. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, because that's also one of the things that we really loved, and how we started pulling in some of the play testing were characters that we were going to do in one shots or in longer campaigns. Because there's been a few times we've hopped in a longer campaign and thought. I'm really bored with this character or I really hate this voice that I've done. <laughs> I think we've all been there like, oh no, yeah. I made a mistake. Yeah. So this has been a really Oh, you, oh, you make a character that you're really excited for the concept of and then you're like, oh, yeah. this is not the campaign that we're playing. <laughs> we, yeah. I didn't realize this was going to be so, <laughs> I didn't realize this was going to be such a like heavy political drama or whatever and I've created a barbarian who's whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's been good for us to think about like, okay, how how many different moves do I have? How does my character want to interact with my environment? When I fight, what do I say when I fight? Because that's often when we do see the critique of there's only fighting and then there's RP because people only focus on one or the other. And by practicing, it allows you to kind of think of both and how your character still has your personality mm -hmm. in the middle of a fight that changes their decisions of, yeah. do they always go for the killing blow every single time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's the, there's there's a meme that I liked of the it, it's it's that um, format of the um, uh, oh shit what was that one with Jennifer Aniston and with the R, the RV the role uh, the something about the family um, uh, oh the, there's yeah. the, the the four the four family members that aren't actually families uh, and and the guys the the guys like. Um, uh, D and D should be about RP, and then the the woman's like, it should be about <laughs> combat. And then uh, I like to have combat before my RP. I like to have uh, uh, combat after my RP. And the last guy is just like, you don't RP while you're combating. Yeah. <laughs> what? <Right. Yeah. laughs> well, you know, for there's just you know, and, and it's a, it's a it can be a hot topic, but in the community, but we, we've never really understood the the argument of of keeping those things separate. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm much more of a mechanical player. Mm -hmm. uh, I would prefer to be in combat a majority of the time, but I want my combat to involve RP. Yeah, you know, uh, we like to think about it on our show like that. You have an RP action every round. You right. know, not mm -hmm. only are you attacking bonus action reaction, but like you know, say something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, do something. You know, and even if it's even if it's not a. a a dialogue or something, you know, uh, be descriptive in how you're doing, you know, add some flavor to your attack. You know, don't just say yeah. I swing my sword. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, cause for fine. me, my, my brain's very cinematic in, in the mm -hmm. way I think about things. So, um, I'm not always great with the dialogue and things, but, uh, I really like to describe things cause mm -hmm. that's how I see them in my yeah. brain. Like a, like a shot from a movie. 
Yeah, like I often talk about the camera in D and D when I'm describing right. things. I say like we zoom out and see the rest of the scene as blah blah blah, or like as the shot fight is fired, the camera follows the arrow through the guy's legs and hits the other guy in the throat. Yeah, you gotta you gotta describe these things. It's fun. Keeps keeps people visually interested, especially if you're relying on theory of the mind. People are just watching mm-hmm. you there, mm-hmm. so you, they need to be able to visually see it as well. Yeah, and, we, and then uh... it lets us show how you experience the battle. Like, what are you seeing when you're going through and fighting all these things? Like, it's not just the actions, but it's what you witness as being important. Yeah. In that. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know to kind of get into a broader topic of like RPing and the way people go about D and D as a as a game, and in, and I guess a lot of our experience has been as cast members on shows. Um, you know, we really started being on shows. Pretty much as soon as we started playing D and D, how did you how like, did you start playing D and D? How long ago was this? Twenty seventeen, maybe we started with uh, Caustic's brother. Uh, I I wanted to play for a long time, and so I resigned myself to having to learn everything and be the DM with mm-hmm. my friends. Um, and so I watched you know some Critical Role. I watched every Matt Coville video that existed. <laughs> I read every handbook cover to cover. Um, and then, uh, her brother was setting up a game and we just were like, uh, can we Skype in and just learn to play? So we did that. And then, um, it wasn't like six months later after, you know, I'd met Captain Robert and stuff that he asked us to come play on the show. So how did um, you meet Robert? Cause I've, I've uh, played with him once before and so I've known him a little. Mixer. Right. Right. I right. met the playing Small on community. Mixer. Yeah. Uh, he and I actually met through a, a mutual friend on there, and we played uh, Elder Scrolls one night, and right. uh, and then and then we met in person at a convention a few months later, and 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 Becca was he got there. stuck babysitting me as we walked because I didn't know anyone right. there except for, I hadn't even met Robert yet, but he's like, well, let's go walk around. <laughs> and yeah, day walking so, around, we had our own date. That's nice. <laughs> so we uh, we started playing on you know uh, our first show which ran for like a hundred episodes um and then we you know we've been on one show or another since then on his channel sometimes one sometimes more um but in any case the uh i was thinking about the 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 way people rp in in combat and stuff and the way where we talk about it um i have this perspective of like people running D D shows and i think uh every i think everybody's seen critical role and they they see the voice acting and they see that um but I think sometimes they over they project onto that, and critical role is I don't it is not as critical role as everyone thinks. They are. <laughs> Does that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think like I mean. critical role tells more uh, crude jokes than yeah. any of the the just one off APs on Twitch. Um, they don't take themselves seriously. Yeah, they I, don't I, do as much I, dialogue as you think. Fully, fully, fully with you. People, people attribute them to being like. People often say, "Oh, you know, we're we're silly and whatever. We're not something like Critical Role." And I'm like, "Have you watched Critical Role? <laughs> Have <laughs> you seen they're... how many dick jokes they make and how, right. how many poop jokes and, and stuff and how and often they're, they're uh... joking about?" And, and so I, f- I feel like I watch all these shows and people are very like, "Oh, I have to be dramatic," and it becomes. <laughs> like a soap opera over dramatic yeah. uh versus like you can just add these little moments of like you know nobody nobody gives a 10 minute monologue in real life and if you yeah. think about a movie those except when we're fighting scenes, and then i do right <laughs> those heartfelt scenes are really really <laughs> short you know out. they're they're 10 seconds 20 seconds 30 yeah. seconds and then you move on to the next scene in a movie or whatever yeah. so that's how i kind of think and, about and often things. the next scene in the movie even in dramas it's a moment of levity not necessarily jokes but Correct. a moment of you you coming up for air as it's known in sort of psychology terms yeah, yeah. and so I, I feel like that's something we we've tried to focus on with our show is kind of um you know portraying that we get very serious sometimes but then you know very funny and very mm. stupid and very whatever and um, I think I think we need more of that in the the, the actual play space so that people, uh, you know, uh, just just try to be too serious too much. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. And it uh, it does the opposite of what you want it to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or trying to well, be serious I... and not realizing that that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you have to be that 100 percent of the time. You can have Correct. levity and jokes and things and still be a largely serious show. <clears throat> yeah. I'm I'm gonna balance that a little bit and okay. say that's also the beauty of having a lot of 
different things on Twitch and different people that you can play with because especially on a performance level, there are certain stories that hit us at different times, whether what we're going through, what we're interacting with, what we're willing to share with other people. Sometimes it is a lot easier to do comedy nonstop. And other times having those drama moments serve us more than it serves perhaps the public that's watching it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of it, that when we do LFGs, that you get to find the table that hopefully tells the kind of story that you want to tell, whether it's the full drama, or maybe it is the soap opera. Listen, people love their novellas for good <laughs> reason. Do. Okay, so there's it's just a different form of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And it's remembering that different stories, even if it's not the right fit for us, like it's a Goldilocks scenario, yeah. is that it may be necessary for someone else. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I we we experiencing that at the moment. At the moment, um, Viva the Dirt League, uh, the the comedy group that I'm a DM for on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, we we do like half half hour episodes. We're mostly comedy genre, com mostly comedy format. Um, easier for people to catch up on and, uh, and 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 keep up with rather than like four hours of actual play every week. Um, mm -hmm. And so people have come to expect comedy skit, kind of laughing and joking, and consequence consequences hit biting them in the ass because they don't think about it and stuff. But lately, uh, we're, we're about to come up to episode 100, and in the one that recently just dropped, episode 99, uh, one of the main characters has finally, after 99 episodes of this game, started to realise that he's playing his character for the lols, which has meant that his character has, has done like a whole bunch of horrible murder hobo -y kind of things. And he started to, in this last table session that we filmed, uh, he started to really come to terms and like lean into the role playing af aspect of it and going, what have I become? Who am I? And like yeah. a couple of the times in the fights, he just like opts to go yeah, greg just screams that's my turn i'm done <laughs> and he just like he, he sacrifices his whole turn to just like introspectively like think about who he is um and i was like amazing inspiration and, and we carried on with the fight whatever and then there's a few of the comments been like this is comedy he shouldn't be leaning this hard into the ptsd and blah 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 and this is not like it's because there's a few elements where we kind of like we don't play it for the the comedy sometimes like he's just mm -hmm. There's yeah. comedy happening around him, but for his character, he's just like, I've killed people. Like, I'm not good. Yeah. <laughs> and we and, and we were like, comedy's allowed to have those moments of of mm -hmm. uh, deep. Uh, and then it makes the comedy more fun when you come back out of it again. And you have that moment of levity to sort of like, it's been it's been right. underpinned by this drama first. Yeah, well, make sure. I think like roller coasters, it's much yeah. more exciting. It's not just having like these <laughs> you know, high you know, moments you know, where you're just chuk, above chuk, everyone. Chuk, 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 and then just pull yeah. into the station. Yeah. It's only <laughs> yeah. comedy the entire time. <laughs> having those deep moments <sighs> gives you then yeah. that Oh, God. And then you can change. rise back up again. Yeah. Yeah. It because, makes the... yeah, vocally, vocally story-wise, anything, when you have a dynamic, right, when there's change, that's what's interesting to people. That's what makes it exciting. Sorry, my cat. Oh, you're good. Yeah, any 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 one any one note show or anything is is going to be boring. Whether that's one note comedy, one note drama, um, you're always going to get better. You know, the one is going to make the other better mm -hmm. if you do if the timing is right, if it's if it's done the right way. And I like the way you're talking about your, you know, if you're one character experiencing this very serious moment, um, and I think that's awesome um, to have that, and then to also realize and have people realize that just because this character is having a serious moment doesn't mean everybody around them, yes. you know, is. Um, you know, someone else might say something um, unceremonious uh, about their situation and, and not take it seriously. The, the, um, the one of the bits that made it all the funnier is that. Uh, he's, he's, he sort of says, I'm, I get off the cart, they're like on a cart and horse uh, going up into the mountains, and he says, I, I get off the cart and I just kind of walk over to look at the vista and just think. And then one of them comes over and, and I says, I give him a cigarette. Uh, and then it's a minor <laughs> illusion and it explodes in his face. And, and the guy, and rather than, rather than laughing... <laughs> The guy who's playing the guy who's suffering from the 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 mental illness at the time, he, he just he just sort of goes, I nod, and then I turn back to the cliff, and I was like, no, oh, so oh god, <laughs> he's, he, he's just like he doesn't so yeah yeah because because yeah. the guy who's like pre making the joke that's still funny, and the people who want in the comedy get to laugh at Baradun trying to make him laugh and failing because he's being so unempathetic to his situation, mm -hmm. and that's the funny side of like oh this guy's being a, a dick to him. Um, but but then Greg doesn't have to f f ruin his moment of character drama by going, yep, I I 
I make it e- I make it even worse by not yes. acknowledging his joke and not laughing at it. I'm just yeah. I just nod. And I think that's great. Uh, I think that's number one good storytelling. But I think it's great as um, you know you as a DM allowing that to happen. Mm. You know and not shutting that down because yeah. there are sometimes you'll you'll see games where if things you know if it's a serious game and things start to get light, you know that the DM might steer it back. Yeah. And say no, no, no. We're a we're a drama show, or the other way around. Like no, we're a comedy yeah. show. So, uh, I think that's part of being a good DM um, is allowing your players to play the game that they think is fun. Yeah, and I and I and you know it's about checking in as well. Like I checked in with mm-hmm. the yeah. guy who was actually playing the role and was like, "This isn't like you 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 good still, bruh? You good? <laughs> is everything still you're good?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's fine." Where I'm just I'm just wanting to wanting him to finally come to terms with all the things he's done. I was like, sweet, let's let's re- lean into it then. I can't emphasize how much that means to me as a player. Like I, with Dag, right? You you know Dag. Mm-hmm. You, know, yeah, you know Dag. Yeah, you, you know Dag. Uh, Dag and Jared from Nothing Ventured, Nothing Game. I we I was a player on one of their shows, and they we went through a particular tough situation and i can't say how much it meant to me as a player that they checked in with me before the show Mm. kept checking on me during the show and then talked with me afterwards like i I felt very comfortable and they knew my boundaries and they Mm -hmm. continued just to make sure that i felt comfortable and safe and that made me feel like i could really explore this character because you know that there's safety nets and you know it's you're not going to go too far without it yeah you're not going to uncover things that gets too overwhelming (laughs) Because that's the yeah. thing. That's that's why I don't like the term session zero so much. Because I I think it Im- implies to people that it happens once before the campaign, and then yeah. three years later you're playing the same campaign and you haven't checked in again since. Like it, session zero yeah. kind of has that implication for me because it's before session one. I I, mm-hmm. I don't know what we should be calling them instead, but like check in sessions or something. I think they should mm-hmm. be happening mm-hmm. before every other session or like every five sessions you have like an entire like instead of your usual weekly game you just chat about how the campaign's going or whatever it is like yeah. you need to know for your party but you do need to be checking in every so often and being and even, I, if, even if it's a, just through discord between games like hey how's it everybody yeah. enjoying the the session and where it's going and yeah the, that's the, that's the important and things as a as a player i've <clears throat> we probably all have had bad experiences on that end where you're playing a game and you know maybe you're having a good time but uh things go in a way that you know you no longer find fun mm. uh for whatever yeah. reason um mm-hmm. you know whether whether that's uh something feels out of out of left field or something may feel punitive and for some reason or um you know something is being forced upon your character in a situation um it's definitely something that as as i dm for people um especially around their their character like usually i th- I feel like i'm pretty good about you know getting people's lines of where they're comfortable is with the different kinds of content but i feel like one of the hardest things is um you're the you're a dm you are supposed to you know set plot hooks and and you know you take some liberties with characters and with backgrounds and backstories and stuff like that but you know it, it's so easy to be to read into a backstory that someone else has written and maybe take it in a way that they didn't intend for it to go. Um, And, you know, and now like, they're like, Oh, I don't, I don't want my character to go that way or the backstory. That's not what I was envisioning. And that's, that's always nerve wracking for me. That's the part I worry about a lot. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Tough stuff. But yeah, I think that's why we talk. That's why communication is key. Literally the first thing that I say, like often I'm getting people coming into my chat and being like, hey, first time chatter. Hey, love your stuff, whatever. I'm beginning to DM. Uh, Have you got any advice? And I always give the same forward advice. People are probably going to start putting it in the chat now because they have heard it said so many times. Talk to your players. That's the best yeah. th- talk to your players. <laughs> best advice I can give to anyone is it's the most important thing, and it sounds sort of frivolous when I say it like that, but like it is the most important advice I can give. O- open communication. Communication is key. You need to have the safe space and and the the, the confidence uh, with one another as players and DMs and stuff to mm-hmm. to uh, even if there's nothing, there's no issues, and you you don't anticipate there being any issues or whatever. You just need to have mm-hmm. a pre-established understanding that if there ever was to be issues you you can talk to them and you can mention it and things <clears throat> and yeah, i think it's I, go ahead. I, i'm gonna say also to 
really make sure that as a DM, you take on that responsibility very personally, even if they seem okay, or even if you've been playing for a long time <laughs> yeah. or you know them, reach out. This goes doubly so if they are a new player because they don't know to ask questions. They don't know what the rules are or the norms or what's safe to ask, what, shape, yeah. what do they need to share? What background information should they have? That's important to know. It's also important yeah. if you've got minorities sitting at your table because they already feel like the one off. <laughs> yeah. Even in the, even if it, the the conversation's great and it's fun, they have different experiences. And if they're the only one with different experiences from everyone else at that table, hmm. they're going to feel already slightly separated. And right. so continuing offering that olive branch out is it, it's, you can't replace it with anything else. It means yeah. the world to your players. So continue to do that. Good stuff. You go. See, see, even levity and uh, yeah, even even uh, serious <laughs> conversations, uh, in, in, yeah, you know, even conversations have serious yeah. moments and levity moments. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to clear my throat. Is what I wanted to do. <clears throat> we give you uh, permission. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. I I wanted to uh, chat outside of D and D stuff. Like, what's mm, t- sure. let's talk let's talk non D and D life. Is this uh, how much of your life does D twenty deathmatch take up? Is it full time job for either of you? What do you do outside no. of D and D? He wishes he could. <laughs> Getting there, aiming towards it. One day you'll have uh, the uh, the big uh, live live arena with all of the people in it. Someday. Uh, so yeah, no, we uh, we both have day jobs. Uh, I teach high school. Um, all right. Uh, and just I have, like a variety of subjects or like a particular uh history 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 cool. so i teach online i've been a high school Quism. teacher Test for on anything. 11 years maybe Quism. 12, 12 i mean years. american history i wouldn't i wouldn't know much so i can't really tell i can't really quiz it. can't really quiz him on it <laughs> quiz you on the kings of england maybe i don't know perfect so then we can but make up answers and you wouldn't know the, uh, <laughs> yeah no so i uh i've been a teacher for uh, 12 years and then um I don't stream on my channel as much as I used to, but there were many years where I streamed uh, 40 plus hours a week in addition to that. In addition to Uh, being a teacher. Because teachers have a lot of downtime, I hear, right? Like high school teachers, you don't have any time. You don't don't have anything that you need to be doing. Especially when you teach all year round. Yeah, you don't need to be like preparing lecture uh, class, class plans or anything. No, yeah so you have all the time because you only work from like nine till <clears> three or something and then that's it and then you don't even have <laughs> school holidays so you've got all of those times off and weekends off these uh <laughs> these days i i don't stream on my personal channel as much that's kind of taking a back seat for me in order to prep for d20 deathmatch um because i uh, am so into the concept and the idea that i would much rather be working on that than you know playing games but i still uh so you know i work during the week i stream on my channel a couple nights a week we played i play D D with captain robert two days a week um and then friday saturday prepping for d20 deathmatch and then the show on sunday <laughs> so do, your, um, do, you, do, your, do your students come into chat and and like i'll come into the class and be like hey i saw your streams none of them even know so that is that's how i like to keep it are you sure? Separation of church and state. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm very sure. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I wonder what would, I wonder what it'd be like if they uh, if they found out. You reckon they're cool? Mr. Mudcat. <laughs> Mr. Mudcat. You reckon they'd you reckon they'd be cool with it? You reckon they'd enjoy it if they found uh, out and it came into came into because it's you know that as soon as one person finds out, the entire school. Will right, know. they all find out. So when I used to teach public school, they you know I the students knew I played games and streamed, and that was. It was fine, but uh, since I've been teaching online for the last uh, six, seven years, it's not really a situation where they're going to recognize me in that way. So, right. um, Un- Unfortunately, especially nice. high school and under, uh, teachers tend to be highly critiqued here for what they do in their outside life. Yep. So they, they don't anything like that might even... In- yeah, they don't like cursing <laughs> at all. So yeah. high school and under, a lot of teachers probably keep any streams or anything that yeah. parents <laughs> might find slightly upsetting uh, under wraps <laughs> but at least uh, but at least you're uh paid super well right as a teacher you're paid right super well at, to, at least to, to a con- to, a, to a, in money they they compensate you well for the fact that you you are a teacher 100 percent of the time right <clears throat> right. <laughs> right correct correct, correct. I, I make so much money that i i spend uh, you know probably 30 to 40 more hours a week working on content <laughs> 
And and Kostik, what about you? You uh, you mentioned earlier you had a master's. What's that? In? Yes, uh, communication. So That's I also teach. You're also a teacher as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What what what, but level, my, what level are you teach? Uh, I teach at the university level. Okay. Cool. So you're a university yeah. lecturer. Yes. So awesome. my students know. They know. Yeah. They and they they follow. They watch. Some of them in they, the chat. They do. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's easier. Like I, I tell them, like, don't sub, don't drop in <laughs> while I'm streaming. If they remember to ask once the class is over, I'm happy to share. And I say, like, that's an easy way. Like, come in, tell me how you're doing, how your classes are in the future, right? That sort of thing. And since they're at the collegiate level, I don't have to deal with parents. Yeah. So I don't mind as much. I, I'm dealing with adults, and that's also why I wanted to teach at that level. Is I. I, I'm not a kid person. There's a reason we don't have kids. I <laughs> I like working with adults. And so at the collegiate level, I have a lot of fun with it. And right now I, I'm teaching at a university that really favors a lot of the creative arts. It's full sale university. So we have already a lot of students going into the gaming space, film, music. And oh, so cool. they love this kind of stuff, actually. It's really right up their alley. And so I love talking to it about them. A lot of them are also streamers or creating content on YouTube or TikTok awesome. or different places like that. So when we talk about communication in my lectures, there's a lot of good crossover does, for them does, as they're thinking yeah, does, about do, it. Do you, have, do you ever draw on D20 Deathmatch for like examples when you're lecturing? Do, do you ever talk <laughs> about, do you ever talk about your own stuff? I, I I don't bring up my own stuff until after the class is over because I don't <laughs> like self-promotion of my stuff. But it was, it, so we did a, a live show recently. <laughs> just, on every, uh, just on every slide, there's said... just d- twitch.tv slash d20 deathmatch just in the corner. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, did I accidentally leave? I accidentally leave my tags? You'd be growing a lot faster. Just this, there's, my, just this, there's just yeah, a small QR code that they can just scan on the, every slide. <laughs> I, your, your I, I try to maintain a saw. high level of ethics so i tell them <laughs> please don't don't drop in that and i've also had a few students try to ask questions about their homework during my streams and really like, no. why what None. is wrong with people how do people no. think that that's an appropriate thing appropriate time for it <laughs> right yeah uh <laughs> Can I, can I just ask about this yeah. thing? Uh, can I get an extension on my no. assignment? Well, currently, no. I'm dressed like the Grand Master. <laughs> I've got the Grand There's master. nothing that's going to happen here. <laughs> so, bless their hearts, little duckies. But, oh, yeah. And a lot of them do play D&D, too. So, right. they, they love it. Uh, they've got their own shows that they're playing. <laughs> they're playing their own games. They're yeah. wanting... And I teach the very first class, too. So right. high energy, like they're wanting to get plugged in. They're here at the university for the first time. They're like, how do I find more people to play with? And it's right. it's so delightful. Oh, I, I have one so of the cute. best jobs out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blissful Dwarf says all, all of your written tests are printed on D20 Deathmatch stationery. <laughs> <laughs> Stickers on each every one of them. <laughs> yep. Man, that'd be fun. I can imagine. I can imagine being like a, a, a statistician, D and D streamer as well. To like like t- t- using mm-hmm. using dice in your lectures and stuff too. And teaching yeah. teaching probability and stats and things. Oh man, that's funny stuff. It, yeah. So yeah, did you so did you guys great. meet through teaching? Is that how you guys uh, first got together? No. Mm-mm. University. We went to university mm-hmm. together. Oh yeah. Yeah. We both studied the same thing. No. no, no, you just, no, just at the same campus. Many, many years ago, what is it? Uh, well, our our ten year marriage yeah. anniversary is in six days. Oh, so yes, congratulations. We so we fun note: if you get your master's here, teaching at a university, you don't actually take any teaching classes. Oh, <laughs> I've I've had zero teaching classes. Oh. Okay. They assume if you're an expert in your field, yeah. you should know how to teach it. It's not that's a great not, policy. That's, that's why not the case at all. That class. is not the case at all. There are a lot of people. I've had a lot of yeah. teachers in my time that shouldn't be yeah. teachers because they are incredibly intelligent or experts in their field and don't know the first thing about how to get that across to somebody yeah. else. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I think in I think uh, here, and I'm pretty sure it's the same in the UK as well. Um, if you have a, you need a degree in something in order to become a teacher but you need uh if you if your degree was not in teaching then you also yeah. need like a, a, a one-year certificate of teaching course or something that teaches you 
So you like, I, I could teach acting because uh, I've got a degree in acting. Mm-hmm. I could also teach mm-hmm. uh, uh, mathematics. I've got an, a degree in applied mm-hmm. mathematics behind me there. Um, okay. I've got a degree in mathematics and a degree in acting, so I could teach either one theoretically, but I would need a, I think it's a one one or two year certificate in, um, mm-hmm. in, in teaching first okay. in order to learn how to teach it. That's Mine was idea, just honestly. all rolled the, rolled together in college. It was uh, mm-hmm. a lot of history classes, and then they threw in some psychology classes, and then they threw in the teaching classes, and then you had to student teach for a semester, and it right. was a, uh, and then you had to take the tests to get your certifications. Uh, you had to pass those tests, and uh, it was all kind of rolled into one. Yeah, yeah. you had quite a few tests that you <clears throat> you took the exams to teach. Well, because well, because social studies here in the in the states, if you are certified to teach um, at the high school level. You are certified to teach history, uh, this U.S. and world history, uh, psychology, uh, economics, and government. So you have to you have to take certifications for basically all of those things. Right. Um, whether or not and you had all too, enough classwork for, for all of those, but Jim as well. <laughs> those yeah. teachers have the best job. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's quite a lot. So you guys are yeah, you guys are Florida based, you say? We are now, yeah, mm-hmm. two years. Where, yeah. where where where'd you move from? Missouri. Missouri. Do you oh, right. do you know where Missouri is? I do indeed. I know U.S. Oh, geography okay. very well. That's uh, impressive because yeah. most U.S. people don't know geography. Very well. <laughs> no, no, they don't. Um, but no, I, uh, I I I taught myself all fifty states and uh, and the Dang. capitals and their nicknames and things at one point and all the provinces of Canada and the ter- territories of Australia, the regions of New Zealand, the counties of New- UK. At one What's point, the capital of Missouri? Uh, uh, capital of Missouri. It's the show me state. And it is, uh, what yeah. is the capital of Missouri? Man, I haven't tested myself in a while. It is Missouri. Lincoln is there. Uh, we've got... Lincoln is there. Lincoln's Correct. in Nebraska. Yeah, You're Lincoln's close. in Nebraska. We've got uh, Jefferson City is in um, the one below uh, Oklahoma. No, Kansas. Can- no, K- K- Topeka is Kansas. Trust yourself. <laughs> oh, man, Missouri. What is it? Come to me. Come to me. I can see the outline of it. I can see it on the board. Ah, uh, Now I'm going to pass. You said it's it. Je- you said it's it. Jefferson City. It is Jefferson City. Damn it. It is. <laughs> I was, like I was dying over in my here. mind. In my mind, Jefferson City was. I was. You I was there. picturing it as below Missouri. Damn hey, it! Hey, I'm impressed. I'm impressed you got Topeka and Lincoln. <laughs> it's beautiful. What's the capital of New Zealand? <laughs> I have no idea. Is it Auckland? <laughs> no, I Auckland's. Forgot. It's one of those I... one of those semi trick questions because Auckland's the largest city, um, uh, mm-hmm. but it, but Wellington is the capital. Uh, so oh, is it? Oh, Wellington. Similar with um, yeah. similar with Australia, everybody thinks the capital Sydney, but it's the largest, but it's not the capital. Capital's Canberra. We're um, U.S. citizens, so don't ask us those questions. I shouldn't have asked the capital. I should have just said, stuff. "Where is New Zealand?" <laughs> Somewhere Where are you here. It there? Ocean. <laughs> Somewhere in the ocean. I, to be fair, in your defense, a lot of yeah. people wouldn't know where New Zealand is because it's lo- not included on most maps. <laughs> There's like an entire subreddit. There's an entire subreddit just called New kidding. Zealand without maps. <laughs> A... I will say, at eighth grade, we did have to know all the capitals around the world and the countries. It's just been a long time since eighth grade. The real I question am... is, would anybody know where New Zealand was if it wasn't for the Lord of the Rings? <laughs> no, and we like it that way. I, th- I like to think I like to think the maps without New Zealand thing is actually a conspiracy from the New Zealand government. They, they've just been I... like, we want to be isolated. We want to remain I... our mystique of being uh, beautiful I have I don't think yeah. it's a coincidence that, you know, you hear people now say they're like, oh, I really want to visit uh, New Zealand because of the, the scenery and how beautiful it yeah. is. But, you know, before those movies, did anybody even know what it looked like? Probably not. I don't not. think so. No, I don't think so. Um, it was probably the most important thing that New Zealand tour- <laughs> has ever ha- happened to New Zealand tourism. Um, and it is incredible. It's every bit as beautiful as those movies show. Like it's uh, I've done a lot of traveling. I've, I've visited about 32 countries or so in my life and uh new zealand's my favorite like i i am happy to have moved here and 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 i got to experience it as a tourist like you don't tend to see oh, your nice. own you don't see your own uh your own homeland mm-hmm. you don't and I, I never went to see like stonehenge and things when i was growing up in the uk 
um, mm-hmm. not until going back to visit as a tourist. So when I first moved to New Zealand, I was moving here, but I was moving here with the mindset of like, oh, new country, let's move around and see places and stuff. So I traveled quite a bit and saw a lot of New Zealand. And there's so many New Zealanders that haven't even been to South Island. And it's one of it's it's, in my opinion, the most beautiful place in the world uh, that I've ever seen is South Island, New Zealand. So then besides New Zealand, what are your top three countries that you would recommend that you've been to? For scenery, for 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 what? For like food, for like for the people there, for the, the things the that above. you can do? Like, All of the above, just, overall, a, just an just overall just general general countries. Yeah. Uh, Canada is probably up there. I loved Canada and loved most of my experiences in Canada. Um, what other places? Germany I really like. Um, I've been to quite a few different German cities and really like it. Uh, where else? <clears throat> um, I say Singapore was great, but I don't really remember it a great deal. I was quite young when I went, about seventeen or so. What about some? It's got to be somewhere else in Europe, surely. We're uh, we're <laughs> we're big fans of Iceland. Oh, I've not been to Iceland yet, but I've heard a lot of good things about it and seen some amazing, um, amazing uh, pictures of it and landscapes and things. It's- it is worth the trip. Doesn't matter where you live, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to get to Iceland at some point. I want to do another um Europe trip at some point to visit a bunch of the countries that I didn't get around to. Um what uh, Croatia maybe. Croatia was gorgeous. Ooh. And I've, and I've got a couple of very nice friends, uh, very nice friends there that we stayed with. Got some gorgeous beaches and really nice history and things to it. Mm. Thailand Perfect. was good. Mary, Thailand was good. Yeah. I keep hearing <laughs> about Thailand. That's that's I think that's, I think that's in our future. Yeah, gorgeous uh, things. Islanders. Unfortunately, Singapore I have was... not had great experiences mythical. No, France is definitely not one of my favorites. Um, everything outside of Paris, maybe, but I did not have any good experiences in Paris. Well, not none, but I had a lot of bad experiences <laughs> with Paris. <laughs> I like non-crowded places. Yeah, mm. yeah. We That's actually, my ideal. We, we actually just got back from Costa Rica. Oh yeah. Um, this previous week we took a short trip out there as we had some vacation and that was uh that was very nice my, uh, Perfect. my brother my brother went to costa rica and got me some dice from there ah oh, why don't we get nice. dice um, I didn't see he, dice. Got, he got me some dice uh, and let's see where are they yeah. i need to show them off because they are the most hilarious they're the most hilarious ones we didn't get ourselves anything <laughs> yeah we didn't buy anything we bought we, we ate a lot of food yeah, we ate a lot of. We did a lot of hiking in that one. Yeah. <laughs> These uh, the wait, wait, dice, wait. the dice that came in this box were they must have been like handmade. Um, uh, they're they're wood. They're not cubes. They're different dimensions in every side. Oh and wow! Hand, yeah, and they're yeah, hand drilled, so you can kind of see that the 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 numbers are all kind of <laughs> skew with. Uh, and that's one of the better ones. There's one that's that's on here that I just absolutely adore. This number, for instance. Can you tell what number that is? <laughs> is it a four? <laughs> I'm not, it's opposite the like three, to... so I assume it's a four. But that's the three. Oh, they're like all <laughs> over. The... <laughs> I feel like this is here. Do they? How do they roll though? Are they? Are they? Are I they I, I want to I want to eventually do like a um a, a, a YouTube um series talking about maths because I don't get to use my maths very much anymore. So I want to talk about like I want to do a short series on my YouTube uh, like the maths of D and D or something. And one of them is going to be like rolling these to like take it take an average of how they're actually <laughs> how they're rolling and talking about the differences between rolling so many different dice and stuff. But very fun. Yeah, they were they were Costa Rican and my brother was like, hey, my nerd brother's into nerd shit. Uh, let's let's get him some nerd stuff. Uh, and then he saw them and was like, "This is a hilarious." <laughs> <laughs> they're all different sizes. Like seeing them on the table as well. They're all like <laughs> just next to one another. I love that. <laughs> How was it though? How was Costa Rica? Nice, beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, it was we, beautiful. We went during the rainy season. Any of the trails we went on, we really didn't see anyone, which was wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. So we went to La Fortuna. The food was fantastic. It was so easy to get around. People were like, ah, oh, you don't want to travel the roads. They're difficult. Like they're perfectly paved roads. And I don't know, maybe because we're used to driving in rural Missouri, but we're like, these turns aren't bad. <laughs> they're great. Yeah, there was, they're easy. <laughs> there was all this advice online about, uh, yeah. you know, if, if you fly into the country, sundown is at six. So if you're not going to be there by sundown, don't drive because the mountain roads are super windy and they don't have any guardrails and um, they're really, really terrible. And, right. and we they drove them and I was like, I mean, yeah, they were very curvy and there were no guardrails, but hey, growing up in Missouri, I've gone much faster around much steeper, curvier right. roads. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, who are these people who have never driven before? Because these roads yeah. are great. I don't know what people Probably are Probably from about. Kansas. I mean, it sounds, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it sounds like New Zealand roads as well. Like, there's a lot of, obviously, outside of the city, outside of Auckland, you're going to be getting a lot of rural roads and windy back and forth. And, and the, yeah. there's, there's parts in the States when we were driving across that was like, there's a mountain range here. Let's go through it. And everything's like straight for like... New Zealand is like, oh, there's a mountain range here. I guess we're gonna, I guess we're gonna have, yeah, gonna have a seven back. day journey to get back onto the other side of it. And so, yeah, it's lots of roads like that here. The the best part is we discovered Waze, which is our new right. map finder. Yes. Oh yeah. my god, it's so good! I did not realize you had so many different voice choices. I was getting ready to fall asleep, so I put on a different voice that I thought would <laughs> keep him awake, and I put on boy band. Which sounds like a young man who turned into a robot that's trying to sing, and it's fantastic. Everyone it's, needs to it's change good. it. Turn left. <laughs> that's exactly, that's what, exactly it what it are sounds they, like. Are they like properly sing, trying to sing the instructions? It's yeah, one it's guy. It's a robot trying to it's sing. Called oh, boy wow. band, but it's one guy. <laughs> one boy. Right. <laughs> How? It's so it sounds like a philosophical question. How many boys does it take to create a boy band? <laughs> like, what's the what's the fewest number of boys you can have to make a band? It's not called boys band. It's boy band. <laughs> it's boy. It's it a boy lot. band. There's a uh, there's also a master chief voice that you can have, and it's just yeah. really good. It's yeah. him. It's the he's legit got, yeah, voice. It, it, it's got all sorts of different voice lines. Like when you've reached your destination and stuff. It's it's yeah. good. If you're a Halo fan, you 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 would enjoy it. <laughs> I've always joked about um, Yoda being a, a, a terrible voice <laughs> GPS thing. <laughs> Turn left, you must in seven hundred meters. Like gives it gives all of the things back backwards and back to front. <laughs> Miss your oh, turn, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when right. which when which one do I want? <laughs> Third on the right, it will be. <laughs> so there you go. Everyone, change your ways voice to boy yes. band. You are welcome. It's worth it. <laughs> So uh, let's talk D twenty deathmatch favorites favorite moments. What's your let's 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 discuss big big things that have stuck out for you for any particular reason. Oh, you mean besides Cosmonius? Besides Cosmonius, <laughs> <laughs> the huge the the galloping grappler, the uh, I, I, the harrowing hooves. Actually, I really appreciate all of your alliteration and and <laughs> got a lot of phrases and nicknames. I I just like your <laughs> your commitment to that whole bit. Uh, it's 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 not the most you know it, it's there, but like when you watch the episodes, it's the just prancing pugilist. <laughs> you just go back through and you just catch like a new one every time or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I just I just appreciate the commitment to that whole bit. <laughs> <laughs> I kept, I added more as well when I when I when I was in the first time I was like uh, I'm gonna be called the I, maybe I added something to do with candy or the or because I won maybe the crown oh yeah, yeah I can't yeah. remember I added something the so the next time I came in I the pinata destroyer or something yeah fun <laughs> stuff yeah so uh, those who don't know I played a, a centaur uh, a centaur monk and I made him a an old timey pugilist um, and very much uh, all about charisma and and showing off with long Fabio hair. So um, uh, I, before we talk about best p moments, actually, that reminded me I was going to ask you about the your, uh, editing process with your Twitch, uh, your, your TikToks and stuff. So like, okay. how does how does t tell me how it all works? Uh, right, let's start at the beginning of the process. How do you choose who to uh, who to approach to get on on board? Oh, you want to handle this part? Oh, for casting? Yeah, how do you yeah. right from the beginning of the process? You're like, we need sure. somebody else for this episode. Who are we going to approach? So this season that's coming up is a little bit different because for the first time we opened up casting, which was Ooh. really exciting. And look at how many did we have apply? Uh, we had near two hundred applications. Whoa! Yeah, it was. It's a. It's a lot. How did you? How did you <laughs> put it? Put feelers out. How did people know to approach you? Just Twitter. Oh wow! Yeah, we just threw it on Twitter yeah. and retweeted it and said, "Hey, you know, yeah. we're having an open casting call." Yeah. Um, and you know. Of course, we got some some applications that were uh, people with no experience <laughs> yeah. and no clips to show their style. But, right, but yeah. mostly, we got really good yeah. applications. It was a lot of people mm -hmm. who are have been around, been streaming. You know, maybe mm -hmm. some yeah. more notable than others, but uh, a lot of a lot of really good applicants. So obviously, yeah, we can't to, have them all this season. Clear, but... <laughs> we were we were definitely on board. Like we love having players who have never played D D before. Mm -hmm. Their mind is just so open oh, to yeah. doing anything and everything. It's it can, fantastic. It can, yeah, it but, can really help when you have somebody new who's not because then they don't. They're like, I don't know what the rules are, so I'm just gonna. They, yeah. They're really more more likely to lean into the 
describe it and I'll mm-hmm. tell you what it does because that's something that, yeah. t- that I find hard to get through to people who are new to the game but not so new that they mm-hmm. still they know the rules now um, because mm-hmm. then they go oh can I they, they look at their actions and they go I've an action and a bonus action and react so I, I, can I I'm, oh, I guess it'll be more than an action yeah. to do this thing and I'm like ignore what's on your character sheet right now tell me what you think you want to do in the moment i want to slash the thing and mm. and drop the chandelier and la 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 and then i as the dungeon master it's my job to go okay that's going to require a so-and-so check and another thing mm-hmm. in my bob over here and blah 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 I, i'll tell you what to roll and you roll it you just don't yeah. limit yourself with creativity so new completely new players can be right really good for that yes but as so, a small note for anyone applying <clears throat> you don't have to have experience but Try to include clips because we have 200 yeah. applicants and then you just say, I don't have experience and I don't have clips. But if you call me and talk to me, you'll know. I'm like, <laughs> that's so I'm not calling putting, you. Yeah, that's you putting it on me. That's <laughs> yeah. my favorite response was uh, in the application process was that uh, uh, we had a section said, hey, you know, do you have any clips that we can see that either show off your RP or just your personality? If you have a stream yeah. or just something, YouTube, something. And the. Uh, you know, I said bonus points if you uh, if you show us an RP of the character you proposed for our show because right. we gave him a space to propose gotcha, a character. Yeah. Um, and there was maybe maybe like five five or six maybe that said I can send clips upon request, and I just thought this is the request. Is it, I, put it, I put the request in the thing, and it's, it's the you're showing me yeah you're showing me that you're not fully reading is not a good sign. You know, I like to want to give people a chance, but at the same time, like yeah. you get 200 applications, you just gotta yeah. things like that. You just gotta throw them out. Like That's, I don't have the time. One to of the one of the major down. things. One of the major things I learned from a career as an actor was just like the audition process is not for you to go. They'll see the potential in me, and they'll no. The audition process is your one chance to be like they are going to to so many others. Nope, nope, yep. nope. Because they're getting so many. You need to be like, oh, you need to pause the finger to be like. Oh, maybe. This. Yeah. So you need to yeah. bring it yeah. 100% in their thing. You need to give them everything that they're going to see on the thing because they're not just going to go, he's really bad, but I think he might have potential, so I'll give him a shot and see if he's any good. No, that's what the audition process is. <laughs> this and is so the that's... request for those things, please. Um, so we've gotten, <laughs> you know, we opened the applications, uh, not for every slot this season, but, you know, to fill in some of our gaps because we, we, we've wanted to branch out. We want to continue to branch out. Um, yeah. to new players and, mm-hmm. and every season has been different season one started literally with that that dry erase board that we had the piece of plexiglass writing as many people as we knew from mixer from the D community uh you know people like uh dag and, and yourself mm-hmm. uh we had only played with you in that starfinder game uh oh, off stream yeah. with dag yeah yeah, yeah that's we met right. the one time and we we're like let's ask him you know so it was just yeah, a, yeah. It was just a list of everyone we could think of. Um, And then we just approach Mm -hmm. them and say, hey, do you want to play D&D? This is what our show is. Um, Season two is a little easier because you can give an example and show, hey, here's here's clips, here's video you can see. Yeah. Um, Season two, we had a few people approach us and say, hey, I want to play. And so that was nice. But, you know, mostly it's just us going through people we either know or as we've gone through those people branching out into twitter tiktok wherever and just looking for looking for people uh for people and 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 that's been nice because as we've branched out past people we know we've also made it a conscious effort to try to be more diverse in our casting yeah um and so season three is going to be the most diverse group Mm -hmm. of people we've had to date so that's and that's that's nice a variety of ways in both gameplay style experiences we're trying to make sure that when we think of D D that we approach it in a variety of ways yeah. every time, because as we know, there's no wrong way to do D and D. There's no person who can't sit at a table and play D and D and love it. So we want to make yeah. sure that that is there and represented. And, and we've important. got the benefit of doing that. Yeah, yeah. it's important. It's, and we've got as, the benefit of yeah. doing that because we change players every week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It certainly helps. Yeah, it is important as as successful representatives of D and D to people who are getting into it and looking for D and D content. Um, it's important that people can see themselves in that and go, oh, cool, look at this. This person's uh, playing D&D. That means that I can play D&D. Mm-hmm. It's definitely made us better players and DMs to have new people yeah. every single week um, with different styles. And sometimes we've not ever met these people. We just reached out to them and just said, do you want to play? And they said yes. 
And uh, so learning people's styles, getting better at reading people more quickly so you can give them a better experience. Right. Uh, kind of reading like, oh, they're, they're not into this or they're whatever. Um, you know, and just, just kind of being more adaptable. Um, I think we've gotten a lot better at that over time. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, dealing with people's personalities. Episode one was... Nice, but we're much better since then. We were very excited about episode one when we did our first play test. We were very excited about how good the show was uh, at that time. We're like, this was amazing. This was fun. This was everything we wanted it to be. Yeah. And now when I watch it, it's so cringy. I'm just if you I'm don't just like. I, I heard a long time ago. If you don't cringe when watching or thinking about yourself as an early person, you haven't changed. You haven't grown. So yeah, yeah. I'm fine with one. I'm finding I'm fine I'm finding that I am fine with cringing of my earlier work because it means I've grown since then. Right. Yeah. So I'm that's that. that's really good. That's kind of our process for, who, for getting who people um, just who have you reached out to like who's the 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 most popular person you've reached out to you ever you ever reached out to anybody in like the big D and D scenes? So uh, we yeah uh, we, I've I've reached out to to B Dave Walters. Mm. Uh, he politely declined. Was too busy. Right. Um, I've reached out to a number of other people in that circle who, you know, either didn't Abria. get back to us. Abria, yeah. um, because right. we love I actually, her style. We love I don't remember how, but yeah, her and I great. follow each other on Twitter from way before oh, wow. she was even on Critical Role. Oh. I don't remember why. <laughs> we just do. <laughs> saw her on something one time, and we, we, like... we must have met at a convention or something mm. at some point. Because I've been going to conventions for right. a lot of years as a streamer and yeah. um, and networking and stuff like that. So it's probably that. So um, we recently asked Johnny Stanton. I'm not sure if you know who Johnny Stanton is. I know uh, the name. He is Sounds familiar, a but... professional football player with the Cleveland Am Browns. American football, right? Right. right. American okay. football. He uh, unfortunately he's got training camp the the time when we wanted him to come on so he couldn't do it. Turns but... out most football games are Sunday, isn't he? <laughs> he was so he was nice. excited oh, yeah, about you're it, on but TV. Just make it, so, um, <laughs> you know, like most of the time it's just skip off, man. Just skip yeah, it one yeah. week. What's a game? <laughs> uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna reach out to people. Obviously, we we love playing with the people we know around us and mm -hmm. our friends and yeah. and but we we continually as a as a show as a business you you do have to try to pull in bigger and bigger yeah. uh names gotta, as well when you gotta you can. reach up and hand down i, I see like you gotta correct like, yes. hey, come and chat with and, us and people around you but you've also kind of got to keep reaching if you're going to keep growing and yeah, i think so we've, most of those we've higher names people. also really love that because they won't especially in D D, we're at least lucky with the people we know they want to stay plugged in with the community there's yeah. I don't think I've met very many that are like, no, this isn't my thing. Like yeah. I'm a, I'm fancy. I'm too big of a deal now. <laughs> yeah. Like that. We don't get that. It, we're lucky enough to know people that just get excited to play games. And yeah. most part, so whenever we hear no, <laughs> yeah. When they hear no, it's because their schedule's too busy or yeah. to be honest, like it, and I respect this greatly. Like they're just not in our price range. Right. We can't yeah. pay them Absolutely. what they deserve to get paid. I mean, none of us get paid what we deserve to get paid, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, and so we respect that. Like, we get it. One yeah. of these days, we will make yeah, enough the, to get you on this it's, show. Yeah, it's the same It's the same with me. I've been approached by a bunch yeah. of podcasters and things, been, like, asking for stuff. And usually I'll be like, yeah, man, it'll work. If I, I'll fit it into my schedule, I'll do it. Um, yeah. But occasionally I've had to look at it and go, like, you don't have any work behind you yet. Like, this, is, you've asked me to be on, like, the first or third episode or something. Like, ask me again in six months when you've got, like, several episodes that I can actually listen to and be like, is this... Yeah. You know, have you actually have you actually put your own work into building, and then, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm happy to I'm happy to try and fit it into my schedule. And if I say no, quite often it's because I'm, my schedule's like I've got negative time. <laughs> I already had no time before saying yes to the last thing, so I've got negative yeah. time now. <laughs> well, and the one of the good things about our show is that you know we've, um, you know, even if we can't get uh, you know D and D specific folks who are a little bit higher up on the the the, the ladder as it were hmm. um to be on the show our show works just as just as well bringing in somebody who's never played who might be someone with a hundred thousand twitch followers yeah uh, which we've had we've had yeah. we know but uh you know that's because of years of streaming we do have connections in that space right. yeah so if you were to go back through our list you would see regularly we've had people on the show with uh, 50,000, 100,000, 25,000, and, you know, maybe even more than that on, like, TikTok and stuff. 
um but you know they're not D D specific people but uh you know for us it doesn't matter you can you can be from anywhere in any space yeah. and we want that we want every everybody from every every space and content creation it helps not only with the diversity thing but also with 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 showing that D D isn't just for one particular type of person and you can be a you can be famous predominantly for sports or something and then you and then it's like oh shit this guy plays D as well or he's going to try it because it's not as nerdy as it once was or it's not as stigmatized um there... yeah the, the the people from all walks of life uh, enjoying D and D is a really good way to uh, to keep enhancing the people that get into TTRPGs and understand what they we are. definitely we definitely have dreams though of, of of you know some some people that we love their content and love who they are and we want to see them on the show. Um, Danny you know, Trejo, bigger, Danny Trejo, we want on the show. All right, yeah. uh, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of professional wrestlers who play D and D, and they play on Twitch too, and we would love to have some of them. Uh, you know, come on the show at, at some point. And um, it's really just about, um, I think, being realistic about your managing your asks. You know, you mm-hmm. uh, you only get a certain number of asks with some people. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you want to wait till you're in a spot that you can provide value. And that's, and that's something that I think we've learned coming up as a streamer is, um, you know, you want to make content with people that are similar size, but you also want to keep Again, like you said, reaching up, but also mm-hmm. you know, reaching down as well. Down as well yeah. um, but you yeah. need to uh, you need to be realistic about where you're at. Like yeah. you know, uh, mm-hmm. there's uh, like a bracket. In... There's like a bracket around you. You don't want to be right. going yeah. to speak to Matt Mercer and be like, "Hey, come on my thing," because I've got a thousand right. people that watch. And he's like, "I got the time yeah. for that." And again, right. you don't want to be going down to the person with one one viewer every week. That's like, I feel like maybe you need to work on your own stuff first of all. There's there's a bracket around your thing, and you. Yeah got to know whereabouts to, to and look it, for it and it needs to be mutually beneficial uh and, and that i think that goes for more than just D, but you know whether you're doing a podcast or whether you're doing uh a show or a, a stream or something or or whatever you, it needs to be mutually beneficial in some way mm-hmm. um that always doesn't always have to be in terms of followers or money or something sometimes it can just be the enjoyment of the content but you know yeah. both parties need to get something out of that um otherwise you're just doing it for fun yeah. Um, and that's great if that's what you're doing. But if you're in the the business of trying to run a show or whatever, mm-hmm. you need to. There needs to be um, both parties benefiting. Otherwise, somebody's losing out on something. Yeah, fun plus yeah. benefit. Uh, I uh, mean, it, yeah, just because there's money behind the show, like you have to build everything out. You have to put time and effort behind it. It's not that obviously fun games. Lots of effort, tons of effort still. But when you're putting it on as a show there is a difference between playing D and D for fun and putting on a performance. Mm-hmm. There's a difference yeah, when you're huge. playing it, when you're, when you're playing at home and you're, you're using Spotify versus, mm-hmm. Oh, now I'm running a show and I've spent the money on overlays, yeah. uh, music rights, uh, you know, a number of patrons for maps, yep. assets. Yeah. Uh, I'm paying my cast members. So, you know, when you start spending a lot of money as a show, you know, obviously you want to get some return on that investment. Mm -hmm. Um, So you have to be realistic, but you know, you can't reach too far and you do also have to be realistic that there is good talent that has not reached the same level you're at yet as well. And you can, you can absolutely benefit from somebody who is just really talented, but not popular. Yeah. There's a bunch of D a bunch of D and D Twitter accounts, uh, Twitch accounts that I, that I follow and watch and I'll, I'll pop in when I see them online and stuff that are usually like, just into the double digits of viewers and i'm like this person should have hundreds of viewers i like yeah. every stream they're amazing i love, I love yeah. their work and and i'll i'll constantly like raid them and i'll talk about them on my stream when when they pop into my channel i'll be like hey go check out so and so perfect example for us was we we just did a live our our first live show at uh, gcx here in orlando mm. this summer so it was a live in person show nice. um it's That's on our exciting. youtube if you want to check it out my but, coworkers uh, showed up yeah it was <laughs> But a great example of, of that is that, uh, you know, we, uh, some things happened. We needed a, to have a player kind of last minute. We're kind of out of options of people who could attend the convention. Uh, we got a recommendation from somebody and, you know, it was a, it was an individual who doesn't really, they stream a little bit, but they, they have no social presence to mm-hmm. speak of in terms yeah. of that. Yeah. But they'd played D and D before they'd done some stand up comedy locally. Um, and they were amazing. They were great, Rogue and they was... added. 
fantastic. so much to our show and interact with the audience. And our show would not have been as good without him. Um, so you just have to, you know, sometimes you just have to say screw it and just have fun and play yeah. with whoever wants to play too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I've, I've got a similar thing for my short yeah. rests. I've got like a, a document of all of the people that I keep a track of. Like, oh, I've played with this person; they were really fun. I've watched their mm-hmm. streams. Oh, this person was recommended. Yada yada. Dag, uh, Dad as a gamer is we call him Mick Fury because he's uh, cause, <laughs> yes because yeah. he's because he's he, he's the Avengers assembler. He, he goes, he's yeah. just the contact person. You can never hear what he's saying for all of the names he's dropping. And, um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> he's. He's, he's, he's met and worked with everybody and he knows everybody and he's yeah. like, oh, we should work. And he's constantly being like, oh, do you want to do this thing? And even tomorrow, tomorrow night, I'm doing a uh, Monkey Island themed D&D game um, with some of his <laughs> German friends. And he's like, oh, because you yeah. like Monkey Island and these guys have done a Monkey Island RPG. So he's, he's constantly making those connections. So it's great. And, I, and I've got a list of the people. I'm like, yeah, I would love to have this person on and this person. And then I've got like a thing down the bottom of being like, I'd love to have these people on, but they're under a category that says not yet. <laughs> right yeah. yep <clears throat> yeah like well, that's you how, just I mean, keep growing yeah. you've yeah. got the potential i'm going to cheer you on in every single way mm-hmm. and when you're ready to make that jump i'm going to be here holding your hand pulling yeah, you up there exactly, right? right well like I mean, there's be... you, you got to cheer and part of it is seeing that investment that willingness mm-hmm. yeah yeah you, and you just have to sometimes you just have to ask too and uh you know uh we met you obviously through dag um but when we started our show you no know, granted you know, we've got our communities on our own individual channels and we play D and D on other channels. So it's not like we don't have any presence in the, in mm-hmm. the, the Twitch space, but you know, we're starting a brand new channel with zero viewers to start, right? Like yeah. anybody else, zero followers. Um, you know, but we'd met you, but even, even you on our list were someone like, Oh, should we ask him? Should we not? Cause like, you know, <laughs> it's too a big, big deal. <laughs> He's not going to have time for us. Comparatively to where we were starting from zero, you know, yeah. last September, like, it astounds me that it astounds, me, so that, like, it yeah, astounds me that it was only last September because the the sort of work that you've put into it makes it seem like you've been going for years. It feels like I, years. Just a, I think it's a, I, I think I it's a culmination. Like it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's a accumulation of years of experience streaming yeah. and creating content. Yeah. I yeah. think that, and it was which this, is why it's different than, than yeah. just starting a show with no experience. Yeah. It was the same for me. I was I was lucky enough to get the bouncing board from Viva. Like when I started streaming, I hit affiliate within a week, and I was partner within nine months because I already had the all of the body of work bit for myself behind the Viva stuff. And so people had seen me play, so people had seen me DM before I even knew what Twitch was. And then I was doing a. Uh, it was at the start of the. Um, Started the COVID pandemic that uh, I, I learned about what Twitch was because a friend of mine said, oh, they're talking about you in the new isolation game series that you're doing on, on YouTube with the Viva guys. Uh, it was a, it was like a short five episode thing that we were doing over Roll20. Um, and people were talking about it in one of the channels. So I popped in and I was like, hey, you guys. And they're like, oh, my God, it's Robert. It's the GM. I love just talking about I love your stuff. Blah, blah, blah. You should stream on Twitch. And I was like, what's Twitch? So they, so, so I started <laughs> off. And so when I started out, I suddenly had all of these people who were like already liked my work coming across. And so I, right. th- I was th- I was grateful enough to be like uh, an overnight success on Twitch. But as mm-hmm. the saying goes, it takes 20 years to make an overnight success. <laughs> Like it yeah. still requires it's all true. of that body of work. It requires my years that I put into acting and learning storytelling and understanding what takes what it takes to be a good storyteller. It took years of my understanding of mathematics and my my inherent ability to make probabilities and calculations and keep balances fight uh, keep fights balanced on the fly and things like that. Yes. My, fan, my fans often mm-hmm. say that my, de- my a degree in acting and a degree in maths makes a degree in D and D. So, like, I so I basically threat. had I basically had all of that stuff before starting. So people can look at my channel and go, "Oh, he's only been streaming for two and a bit years." A um, uh, quick quick clarification: Isn't acting and math D and D already? <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure it is. Basically, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the perfect the combination for it. Yeah, exactly. It's... Yeah, Thank you're you right. Though. I mean, because. And, that, and that's, you know, it's hard to, because we've had people ask, uh, you know, like, oh, how do you start the sh- uh, D&D show? How do you do this stuff? And I mean, it's, it's going to be different for if you're starting out brand new, like, you know, I, again, have a decade of streaming experience, of networking, mm-hmm. of of yeah. trial and error, uh, of a lot of failure. Um, you know, Caustic's got several years of, of that, plus, uh, you know, her background in communication and public speaking and 
um, and all this stuff that comes together. And, and she has her own audience on, on Twitch and, and Mixer that she brought. And I have folks that I've brought. Mm -hmm. And then we have folks that we've both picked up uh, from playing on other shows with like Captain Robert or whoever. Yeah. Who have and come Dag. over to check out the stuff? So, and from Dag and like you know the the Pathfinder game she was playing in. So it's it's not really like we were starting from zero, you mm -hmm. know. So it's a, it's a different scenario. But again, you have to. It does take that time yeah. to 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 put in that work to even get a just that small boost at the beginning. Yeah. And to speak what you were talking about, Robert, like bringing in all the skills and talents that you have, you can't half-ass this. No. A half-ass is nice, but we like a full moon. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> There's nothing more beautiful than that. So I'm you not really picky. do I'll need take to. Half an ass. You, you, yeah. you gotta really stay focused <laughs> and take grow. Take whatever ass we can get. <laughs> a little bit of ass, a tiny bit, asses here. Ass. Uh, start little with ass, a little bit ass, of ass, ass and keep going bigger asses. We love. We got <laughs> big thick asses like big here that we love. <laughs> but but you have to keep pushing yourself yeah. too. You got to keep going. It, Mudcat and I, after every D twenty, we talk about what did we like, what do we need to improve. Mm -hmm. There's never a time like immediately as soon as we finish the interviews he comes over and we sit down and we think what do we need to change immediately what needs to be more of a long term what are we going to change for the next season yeah. both behind the scenes for the players like the the question is always first how do we continue to make this a better experience for the players right yeah how do we put them in a position that they're thriving which i think any dm asks right like it's not like, how do I tell the better story? <laughs> yeah. How do I allow my players to tell the yeah. story that they want to tell? And so we're continually evaluating every single step and we rewatch it, especially when he goes back and does all the TikTok clips mm -hmm. and YouTube shorts that he does. He notices all the little things yeah. and picks those up and says, here's where you got to change these things. We got to do this. We got to be careful of this. Here's how we got to switch over. And so there's never a moment where we just say, oh, that's it. That's the show. <laughs> that's, we're done. We don't think about this it again. It. Yeah, we've, we've achieved perfection. <laughs> Turn can, the lights off. Say, we're done. <laughs> I, I, you know, usually we know right away whether an episode was, you know, I, I won't say that necessarily like any of our episodes have been bad, but there have been episodes that we felt way better about than others. Um, you know, and Especially that's. Especially on the, our skills of what we've done. And our skills. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the, that's the the hard part about having new people every week. Yeah. You have to relearn how to DM differently every day, to make yeah. other people and pick successful. Up on the fly, yeah. Pick up on the fly, the body language and the, and it's had, had of a camera and stuff as well. You can, and, and picking up like on their humor and, and yeah. you know, their cadences and, and, you know, maybe they had a different understanding of what the game was going to yeah. be because we didn't communicate it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so that yep. led to some, that recently. Yeah. Some, some things that were, so, but you know, We're like that was a I, we, terrible chaotic event. We should change that. We usually yep. know it pretty pretty quickly, but I also find out doubly when I go back through to make clips and stuff. And I'm like, if I can't find moments that were, you know, worthy of someone, right, I feel like right, worthy right. of watching. Like, wow, we really, we did something yeah. not yeah, as great as we should be um, doing. And that's, and that's, I mean, you just have to constantly be self evaluating. Yeah. And then obviously, even if you enjoy every episode, like. At some point, you're going to find ones you like better than the others. Yep. You're going to find players that that just got it, or that you succeeded in your admission as a DM, and you laid things out and perfectly, and things went smoothly, and yeah. you know that's going to help everything. So yeah, just, people uh, said people said like practice makes perfect, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. pra yeah. Practice makes permanent. Without active self reflection on the practice, you're not going to get better. Mm -hmm. You're just going to keep. Yeah putting in the same thing so if you keep doing the same thing without reviewing the same thing then you're just going to get better and better at, you're just going to get more solidly into the thing that you're doing rather than actually improving mm -hmm. on the thing you're doing and i'm lucky yeah. to be in a position where i every every monday morning i do a behind the screens uh, episode where i watch the latest episode of the Beaverly dirt league thing that dropped three days before um and do like a watch party and i answer questions about like behind the scenes and stuff and it allows me time to watch the episode back and go what could I have done differently here? What are what are the audience saying mm -hmm. about it, and how how did how did this episode go down, and what was what seemed to yeah. have been the focus in the YouTube comments that I didn't expect at the table, and yeah, it yeah, allows for that reflection. And and to layer that a little bit more on top of that is that of course the dream is each time we're raising the bar, we're learning, we're getting better as DMs, but obviously we're more than just DMs. Our lives don't mm -hmm. exist within a vacuum, and so to be honest, well, I'm. 
there are some okay sorry <laughs> but but even still no like, other, there's, no there's other life, to my life outside no, no other facet to my life it's what i That's do it. it. it's eat and breathe dnd <laughs> you've got like an on and off switch once dnd is done off Click. just powers it out <laughs> that's how you do the full ass every time got yeah. it okay my bad yeah. uh but so like there's other things that go on in our lives of how we are that can also impact like if i've had a completely busy week and full of grading and my brain is drained from trying to yeah. give feedback on 90 speeches <laughs> you know i it, it's going to be a different level of that i bring that week yeah. it's it's hard and i i hate it because it's admitting a weakness like i'm yeah. it sucks to say that i'm not always at my best yeah but I'm I'm not. I try to be. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that will drain us or impact us. Certain life events happen, and you're like, "Well, the show's still going on. I don't yeah. want to cancel this. I still love it." <laughs> um, it I that's also the benefit, to be honest, COVID. of having yeah, you played with COVID. But that's the benefit of us having co DMs, to be honest. Yeah, is that you when know when he had COVID, <laughs> I picked up a little bit more. Or when yeah. I say, "Listen, I," it's nice. Like in moments, I'm like. He, he has handled so much of the casting for season three, if not basically all of it. I've sent out like two messages, um, but he's handled all of it because I was honest. I was like, Mudcat, I don't have the capacity for this. I'm yeah. crashing. I need help. And it's been nice that the show's been able to move forward because I have a partner, a co-DM, who's going to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super nice to to be able to rely on that. And, um, and kind of like we talked about earlier, there are things that, that she does well that I don't do well um you know a lot of times she will make um like uh what are the the promos and like a lot of like layout graphical yeah. design type stuff and i'm not very good at that but she's good at that but i can be better at the technical stuff on obs or whatever um and then you know with one of us is having too much on our plate we can pick up the slack somewhere else and, and mm -hmm. it happens a lot in our games uh if one of us is just not uh not feeling up to par someone else will kind of take the majority role of of doing most of the dming and the other person will just kind of chime in from time to time um or or sometimes if you have you know depending on who you're playing with like one of us just connects better with mm -hmm. that group of people yeah. and so yeah. they just kind of naturally take a lead there and the other person kind of hangs back and i mean you gotta have uh, the opposite is true as working. well which where sometimes someone's maybe talking too much and we dm each other mid-show to say hey shut up <laughs> so the characters are made for that so <laughs> some of that bickering is real <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've, yeah. we've both had to say like <clears throat> at one time or another like hey let me make some calls here you know like <laughs> Because sometimes you just get in a roll and you just, you yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You just go. Yeah. You know, I'm in just... DM mode. I'm the DM. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that uh, brings us to the end of the preparation stage of the process. <laughs> About an hour ago, I said, <laughs> let's walk us Sorry. through the process. And we started with how do you approach people? And we finally got to the end of that. So then, then, the, uh, then the, the, the game happens. We see that process happening on camera. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, and then what immediately happens afterwards? It's uh, it's in, straight into editing mode, or how does it work for you? Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll try to walk you through this quickly since we took so long at the beginning. <laughs> uh, as soon as the episode is done, you know we will chat for a minute or two. But um, basically, as soon as that's done, you know I've been recording it the whole time uh, locally here. Um, first thing I do is is I. I take that we well, we record an after show so when we're done we record the show right, yeah. and we record and a five dry, to dry five to fifteen minute like after show. Uh, as soon as it's done, I begin uploading both of them to YouTube, right. um, and then I take the videos and I both upload the videos at the same time to Anchor because we produce it as a as a podcast and oh, Anchor okay. lets you upload the video because um, Spotify has video now. Um, right. So the video goes to Spotify as well, and so I upload Everything it there. Everything just man, it's just. Yeah, another example mm -hmm. of people just not staying in their lane. It's like everything's the same thing, like it, t yeah. TikTok and YouTube shorts and yep. Facebook things and Instagram reels and, and now Spotify's got video, yep. so podcasts aren't even podcasts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we, a uh, blog. <laughs> and, you know, because we, yeah. we do have a podcast audience as well, so um, 
in order to do the podcast video though i i do go in and i i open you know i open it up in davinci resolve and i cut out our 10 minute intermission right um and i'll cut out the the intro stuff and just so that way we're we're fading right into the content the add, in, content add in the obligatory squarespace advert that all podcasts must have <laughs> no ads right now we just <laughs> we just do it we're just putting the content if you out would there, like to so. sponsor us please contact us <laughs> we are we are actively seeking sponsors yeah, for though. season three so please yeah. contact us uh <laughs> But uh, you know, so so I'll I'll, I'll up, stop, start uploading to YouTube. I'll edit out the 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 videos for the podcast version, which takes a little time to render thirty minutes, forty minutes, uh, yeah. and then um, while that's uh, all that's uploading, you know, I'll write the descriptions, which you know I've got a form for that, but you know you have to fill in the blanks and yeah, um, the descriptions and stuff, and then I'm trying to think what else to do. Um, and then, so that's Sunday we night. Start afterward. doing a few timestamps and talking about which ones might be TikTok or clippable. Yeah, so yeah. In that, in which, that first shout out, very... yeah, shout out to some of our like I, I see Kristen in chat like for some, when I love it. We love it when chat clips moments in Twitch for it's us because so, it makes so it useful, so much easier. Yeah, yeah. And what else is easier when they name their clips? There's so oh, many, oh, so God. many, so many clips that are just the title of the thing. Please put a name to your clips if you're clipping something. Name it so that you can find oh, it again. Thank you. Sometimes you get one of those <laughs> clips that's they either got edited wrong or just is out of context, and yeah. you're like, "What the hell Why were was they this clipping?" Clipped? Yeah, what was the <laughs> I, I've, I've had but, this discussion a few times, and I think some some of it might be like somebody is somebody's like leaving the chat and wants to just like have a have a note for themselves when they left mm, so they might just clip sure. and then they can come back and be like oh i watch it from this point on maybe because otherwise i'm like there's there's nothing clippable in this in this whole minute mm -hmm. <laughs> and it isn't titled or anything yeah so um so we upload the video i start doing the the podcast and get that stuff up there um and that's mostly it for Sunday night. That usually takes me. We end up we end about eleven. That'll take me somewhere between an hour and a half, two and a half hours, depending on you know how many times the resolve to wants to crash, <laughs> or if I forget to record and have to go pull the vod and re-edit that. Yeah. And then um, usually I'm pretty good about it, and I have our audio set up in a way where I don't really have to clean the audio. I've just right. kind of I've just kind of uh, made that uh, something that's in the pre-show or pre pre-workflow so um and then it's usually monday morning um because i do work from home so i kind of can double dip on my time sometimes but right uh monday morning i usually i usually have a mental list of clips of like okay these were good moments nat 20s or uh someone sent something really funny um and so i'll just i'll go find those and i'll start breaking those <laughs> down tales of pesh's death as <laughs> his oh my god dude tales of, tales of pesh pesh is a uh He's the is best clip making. He's, he's a clip making machine. Yeah, he is so the creative. Stuff he comes out with incredible. If if I, I could have him play. play every week uh, for yeah. the clip content, I would because he just <laughs> every so death is always funny. a top ten depth from him. He's so <laughs> well, good first... at dying. No one dies why, as well as why the love know... face. <laughs> okay, so so that death was good, but I don't know if you saw when he played against when he was um, eaten by a shark or something. Uh, and yeah, he, and so then, he and got then, like his he got, robot hand came out of the sh yeah. Yeah, he spoilers uh, he, for anyone. Yeah, spoilers. He he died in the battle, and the sharks. He refused the help of uh of uh, like a dreaded a spell, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. he refused yeah. the help to be re revived. And chose to just sink to the bottom of the ocean and die, but unbeknownst to the rest of us, he cast cologne using a shark as a vessel or a, of, as a container. And so after the episode, he, you know, it's it's the cut scene at the end where he busts his way out of a shark. Yeah, good. And I'm stuff, like, man. who thinks of that? Like, it's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. Yeah. That's you know, I thought that I was chaotic as a player and thought of weird stuff, but he just. He yeah. just takes it to another level. So, but yeah, we I start uh, usually Monday through the rest of the week. I'm working on getting mm -hmm. as many clips as possible. It's really hard to create short form content without the context of the long form. You know, when you're playing a, a game of D and D, like it's really hard to get like a a 10 second clip because you don't want it to be too long. But yeah, you need yeah, yeah. some sort of context, and it needs to pull people in and be funny. And uh, you know, some of them I'm really good at 
finding and other times i'm just trying to do the best i can <laughs> you yeah, know it's, yeah. they're they're not all winners scrubbing, uh but consistent, scrubbing through consistency being like, is oh, important because because sometimes I've, I've got had this experience myself where you go oh the, that that moment will be a fantastic clip and then you go back to find it and you're like oh oh we kind That's of vamped, so we kind of vamped in the middle of it and it, uh, it will it would be a good clip but we, i kind of stretched it out over a few different things so like the the moment was really great but it just doesn't work for a clip Right. Or it's, I've got it's so funny and everyone laughed, but there was talking over, so yeah. it's hard to hear. It's mm. like, oh. I've gotten really good ab about uh, finding those moments. And then, you know, sometimes you just have to realize, okay, I can't let it play as it played in the show. I'm just going to chop up the words. And sometimes I'll even reorder them out of, right. out of time to convey the same the, moment i'm getting that homer simpson thing of the uh, where he's being interviewed and there's a clock behind him on the wall that's just jumping around all over the time yes <laughs> yeah and so so you know sometimes i'll I'll have to do stuff like that just because i'm like it's such a good moment i want it but i it just didn't work organically so i have yeah. to make it work <laughs> it's just uh and that's yeah other than that then we start uh pretty much tuesday wednesday we start uh, prepping our next set of players, you know, Caustic's making the promos and stuff. And, and I'm already then reworking on setting up foundry and our overlays and all that mm -hmm. for to the new tokens, the new everything for the next week. It's just kind of an ongoing yeah. never ending cycle of just D and D. <laughs> it's a good thing you enjoy it though. Yeah. So, uh, so last thing then, uh, and then I'll open it up to audience questions. So if you've got questions, write them in the, uh, in the chat. I've got a copper piece channel point redemption of just 50 copper to, uh, make sure that I don't miss the questions. Um, uh, what I was going to ask was the random table stuff that happens when the, when you have uh, a hype train and you get to a particular level and then a random thing happens like grandmas being thrown onto the field as happened in one of my games. And then grandpas. And then, and then we got the same wild magic crazy thing again. So you're like, let's make it grandpas. And the grandpas, <laughs> you're a, a D2 and it, on a one it'll hit you and the other it'll heal you. So that, so you've got a wild magic table. You've got a wild, wild thing a table. Chaos. Chaos a chaos. Chaos table. That's all her. I have a very dumb brain and I love all my ideas where some of it's mainly because I think I'm deaf at some moments, uh, like a, instead of a deck of many things, we have the duck of many things, <laughs> which I really love. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. They're just ducks that do different things. Yeah. It's depending on which duck you pick up and you roll to figure oh, out which duck you manage to pick up, you oh, get a different thing. We've got, uh, so, we've got... so these have all just come about from your head. You haven't like grabbed yes. like random tables offline or anything. Nope. Yeah. Nope. We've uh, she... some of them are inspiration than others, but yeah, like, like we've um... got we've got some Go generic ahead. ones that are like you know lightning strikes and it's yeah. a deck save and yeah. that could yeah. be any spell and you know lightning uh -huh. spell in D and D yeah, basically. But like she's a boulder made... or a rushing water. Like, okay, that's another deck save. Like, yeah, that's yeah. the same chaotic event. You can flavor it however you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, but she's made about fifty or so, I think, because we're working on uh, our own homebrew document and, yeah. uh, which will include the table of chaos events, um, as well as you know some some homebrewed rules to make PvP a little bit better, a uh -huh. little bit easier. And uh, you so guys, we're, we're you working guys got on a that Patreon slowly. for these homebrewed rules. You got a Patreon. We do have it a Patreon. Is. We do yeah, not have the document finished. created yet. Finished. So it's we're still working on that. <laughs> what, sort of, what, sort of perks, what sort of perks do you get, give your patrons? Patrons. Rules. Uh, right. Rules. Uh, chaos list. An ongoing chaos list. They also get first access to videos. Mm -hmm. And eventually they're also going to get all of the character artwork and the character oh, cool. sheets. Nice. As well. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so we're still we're still building it out right now. The biggest mm -hmm. thing people get is early access to the uh, like our after show the the you know week early they get that they get early access to the yeah. um, that we're gonna we just we've finished finalizing our our merch and D and D store um, yeah. recently so probably gonna add in a uh, you know coupon code for that store as well. Right, cool. Um, going forward, just you know trying imagine, to find little imagine, ways. Imagine this on the t shirt, you guys. Oh, yeah. oh, it's already on a t-shirt. You can have it. it. <laughs> it's on Etsy. Nice There's a cute one, though, that I love that's called Pretty Deadly Barbarian, and it's like this cute little mace. <laughs> uh, nice. Lots of so, fun yeah. stuff. Cool it's stuff. 
Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. We're almost out of time, so I just want to uh, I just want to ask some of the questions from the chat uh, because Do there's it. a chat here, and I always neglect ne- neglect them for about two hours when I'm doing <laughs> short rests because I've got fascinating people to talk to. Um, so, a link to the Twitch page was asked a while ago, and I think that's coming up periodically in the chat here. But um, it's uh, everywhere at the D20 Deathmatch uh, because they understand marketing, so they've put D20 Deathmatch everywhere. No underscores. Uh, D20 Deathmatch. Um, on everything. Beaker asked a uh, question for Modcat. Did your student? Oh, this was actually asked before. Um, both of you were. Uh, we we realised both of you were teachers. Do your students know you stream and play? I think we talked about that. What impact yep. does it have on them? Uh, Marie asks, out of all the newbie guests or up and coming guests, who blew it out of the park out of nowhere, and we should go check them out. You want to plug any any particular guest? Ooh. You know. Uh... A lot. We've we've have a regular on our show, uh, Big Daddy Teej, um, who had never p- really played D anD D before our first season, but now he's played with us several times, and he's kind of in our side series one shots on the show as well. Um, he's mostly a Destiny streamer, um, just Big Daddy Twe- Teej here on uh, on Twitch, uh, mm-hmm. and he is super funny, does great voices, Big Daddy Teej. really loud. Yeah. And, um. He's he's a great person, so that would be one I would just out of, out of pocket pull out. You got cool. another one? Uh, newbie or just to go check out and anyone Any, anyone that you anyone? you've you've had on that you like, man, they you should check them out. <laughs> Jambo was a lot of fun. Oh, Pure God, chaotic Jambo. energy. Burst Mandari, so I know good friend <laughs> for many of us as well yeah. as we know. The two of them together were just wild, and Jambo was a character we gave her a character like she was just like listen i'm too busy i can't i can't even create a character just make someone for me and we did and she didn't really ever look at her character just jumped just jumped into it was like just just jumped into it she pulled like uh, i guess i'm wearing a bee suit now okay you are (laughs) like it it had that right energy of saying like we're just we're bring a character that is going to be one fun for you to play and interacts with the environment and the person you're interacting with that's they were in the moment and that's what i wanted yeah so she didn't use I, her character sheet at all and it was great no it was <laughs> awesome. it was great so <laughs> sometimes we anchor ourselves too much to our character sheet that we're staring at the paper so it was kind of nice just to yeah. see the imagination run fully wild she's like can i send bees at her i'm like yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, you're, you're a got, rogue, but why not? <laughs> you got, yeah, you got, you got you got ducks of many things around you. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I, who am I to draw the line there? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> like whatever, we don't care. Um, mythical Tyrion, uh, mythical Tyrion asks if there was one character you would love bringing back, which one would it be? Hash. Tales of Pesh again. Pesh. I don't think his character can actually ever die. <laughs> it's just he keeps dying and also, being brought back in different mechanical bodies. Yes, and... <laughs> most of the characters were like make them make them all ready to die, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's fine. But this is one character. The fact that he survived the first time, I just kind of <sighs> want to see his rebirth story again and again. Yeah, because he because like, he was elect- he was like electric at first, and then he was like metallic, and then he had like yeah different... he was yeah cool because he, comes he, back he slightly more yeah I wanted to, I wanted him to be like Sonic <laughs> next time or something like he <laughs> screeches or something like just different types he of damage every time to the box yeah. of chaos in the first time and that's why the arbiter had his soul and then put him in a metal body uh-huh, I see. Uh, so the real so the yeah. real uh baron voltage who came out of the shark baron is still voltage. at large so he's actually he's, elsewhere he's still the, out there the one that we he's killed in that there. 2v2 wasn't the that was just one. his soul oh i see yeah <laughs> <laughs> so he can come back baron voltage baron voltage voltage um spates asks conversely which character are you glad won't be coming back <laughs> Oh. oh god hard oh. one to, hard one to say but uh, was there any character like somebody was playing somebody that you're like oh you know man, what i'll say character. it i'll say it in Got the one. in the play tests our second play test we had an individual who really tried to min max a uh a war forged paladin right um really <laughs> he really took advantage of our system and we didn't played enough yet so we kind of let him do way too much that he should have done and um, he really just didn't understand the concept, and uh, yeah. so I don't know that we ever want to see Dag's character come back. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to throw it a different one, but it's an NPC. It's Timmy, the Mare Worm oh, Timmy. in space. Timmy, the Mare Worm in space. 
Yes, yes. He was an accidental death. The players killed, in a game of tag, <laughs> Timmy the Worm, and he had a wife and child who witnessed this death. He was also the mayor of his town. Yeah, he was he was very loved, but it was he, so he got hilarious. exploded like Krillin on an asteroid. You, do, do you ever do you ever get the impression that like when you're trying to explain things that happened in D and D, it's just like explaining a dream where you're like, yes. so he was so we were in space, but it wasn't quite space. Yeah. It was like a soup kind of a thing, and there were and there was yeah, like a big yeah. explosion, but it was like ice ice explosion. You know what I mean? And then and then it was and then we pull him off to giant into a toad, yes. <laughs> yes. and the people you're talking to are like, we don't have any of the context for this, and you're like, don't, don't worry, just bear with. Me. It's not you don't important. need it. You don't need it. <laughs> uh, Kelso asked uh, for everybody, uh, how do you stay engaged as much as you do without losing the love for it? Take breaks. Yeah. I mean, this is why we're season three. Yeah. We we took some breaks uh, in between. Well, this one was what a month and a half, two months. We took two months because we had the live show in June, though. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we yeah, there's we, a... we take we take a planned break between each season, so mm -hmm. usually like two to three months a year we're not doing the show we're yeah. scheduling yeah. more and uh this this break over the summer i've been doing a lot of work on the back end of like animating all of our obs assets each mm -hmm. individual piece of our overlay now is animated and will move to different places on command oh, and nice. uh it took me forever and yeah. so but it was uh, nice to be able to do it while not also doing the show yeah. right just right, yeah. you need you need to set it up and you know and you need to do things in in general in content creation. If you're whether you're streaming in D and D or something else, you need to do things that are not the thing you're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, especially like if you're a content creator playing video games, if you don't ever go hang out with friends or watch a movie, you have nothing to talk about. And it's right, it's yeah. kind of the same mentality. You have to you have to do things outside to bring an in inspiration mm -hmm. to the thing you're doing. Yeah, that's where a lot of the chaotic events. I was watching a TikTok about a tree that explodes needles. So now it's a chaotic event. Now we have one of those things. <laughs> so, so you have to you have to be careful what you show, Caustic, in case Sorry. it ends up in a game. Oh God, just like so, be very careful people, of any yeah, tree. People, pe people are like trying to hack your phone just to like not show particular <laughs> things to you because uh, heaven forbid she gets inspired by it and <laughs> ends up as stop. a yeah crazy stuff. Um. That's that's funny, yeah. And for me, I mean, I don't, I don't have good advice for it other than take breaks, obviously. But like, because I'm, yeah. I find that I am so passionate about it and I love it, and I and I do, like, th there's an expression: a change is as good as a rest. And I do such a variety of different things. Every stream I do is, I stream about five or six times a week, and they're all different streams. I read books. I, re I do Robert reads, and I do uh, behind the screen stuff, and I do short rests with people, and I do an it's alive where I'm homebrewing something for the game and I do an interactive game on a Sunday called Twitch Tales where the chat is controlling the ca character and uh, mm -hmm. and then I'm and then I'm DMing in person for a game for DM for higher things um, and then I'm doing the Viva La Dirt League things and I'm doing edits on the Viva La Dirt League notes and I just I have so much different stuff that yes it's a lot of work but I don't really feel uh, mm -hmm. the the burnout of going the, like creative burnout I feel exhaustion burnout of going I don't have the time in the day to eat and sleep well enough to and, and also get, keep on top of all my jobs but I don't feel creative burnout of going I don't I don't want to do this game anymore yeah. so for me it's right. just the fact that it's the the wide variety of things that I'm doing all right last question then from Marie which moments will you remember for years to come the kind that are like do you remember when oh my god that was funny or memorable or a lot well, we've, we've mentioned a lot. a lot of your moments. You have mem <laughs> mentioned a lot of them. What's, what's, what's one, one more thing that comes to mind as soon as uh, I say, like, one of your favorite I've moments? I've got one. I, I know my absolute favorite moment of the entire show we've ever had. Um, and it is in an episode from, was it season two? Uh, it was called, it's called Hand to Hand Combat. Uh, okay. And it is the Perception Studio puppets, oh my Cucumber God, so and good. Chunk. Oh, and so uh, it is it is where Chunk... Uh, kills cucumber and he's having a, a prolonged death you know a lot of gargling and then chunk uh, gets tired of waiting for him to die and walks over and decides to just saw his head off um, and we there's a tiktok it's a it's pinned it's our number one tiktok it's our most popular tiktok yeah. and for good reason it's it is my favorite moment we've ever had um oh, and i love the perception studio guys they are so funny aren't they 
I've insanely had the, I've had, talented. I've had the, They're uh, so the, funny. The, the pleasure of playing with them once, and it was so good. They're so in character the whole time, and like in the and the Beautiful. and we're we're going we're about to go live. We're in like the green room sort of thing of the Zoom call before it starts, and uh, and there's cucumber like be, properly just in character as the puppet, um and uh, and yeah. he's like. Uh, oh, this is a. I just remember this is a, a not marked mature, so I better get it all out now. Oh fuck shit! Can't fucking bust it. <laughs> it's just funny to see this. <laughs> see this puppet. It's like Sesame Street style puppet, just be like spouting and all these he's words. So cute. You know, so those are my favorite him. promos I made. By the way, I don't know if you saw those, but like Danger has a new face, you know, sort of thing. And then there's this cute little Muppet nice. character yeah. over here on the side. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked yep. out Perception Studios, definitely do so. They're very funny. They guys. are, uh, they're, they're so very talented. And and honestly, but when we had them on the show, I didn't realize their entire background. I've I've since come to like uh, find out, you know, more about their background professionally, and they have a, a long track record of some really cool stuff as right. individuals, yes. of, as actors and 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 puppeteers and stuff. And uh, uh, mm-hmm. and a uh, small spoiler, but you will. You will be seeing more of them on our channel this season, uh, not just in D20 Deathmatch, maybe Ooh. in something else as well. Ooh. And we'll leave them oh, that. Oh, just tell them. We'll leave them no, that. No, no, no. Oh, is it an exclusive? Okay. Do we you can that? tell that one. This is an exclusive. We're Very still working out the details, and I would hate to say it before it's oh, going to come to pass, but, but we're tentatively have them on the calendar to start a Morkborg series with me. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Morkborg, it is a uh, uh, doom metal TTRPG of just black death and Swedish gore. Um, so it'll be uh, dark and brutal and, and everything I ever wanted and everything. <laughs> that sounds very exciting. Very so exciting we're... indeed. So uh, yeah, and perfect, perfect uh, material for use for using a, a bunch of cute Muppet puppets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Black metal death, all of it. it. It's a perfect match because in Morkborg, it is well known in that style. Like you don't get attached to your characters; no, they are I, going to die. Yeah, I know of it because um, Dread GM is super excited to play some one day, yeah, and and he sent me the PDF, and he, and I was like, everything about it's like you're gonna die, you're gonna die. This is a, everything you're gonna die, and it's gonna be horrible. Hey, the, <laughs> yes. My favorite thing is the calendar of Nakrubal, which is a is a, a you roll every single day, and every time you roll a one, there's a world event that happens, and right. on the seventh event the world ends. Uh, it's just <laughs> over. And you choose whether you're rolling a D4, a D20, a D6, every time, based on how long you want to play. Right. Um, so in the book, it really says... you could be rolling a D4, says, and as soon as you roll seven yeah. ones, you, uh, game's over. Oh, well. Wow. In, yes. in the book, it says, uh, uh, the game is over, everyone's dead, burn the book. <laughs> yes. And I promise That's you, amazing. if we get there, I will burn the book. Nice. <laughs> Oh man, I'm so much looking forward to uh, to uh, this October. I'm, I'm going to PAX, um, and I've only been uh, I've only realized that I was a nerd uh, a few years ago when I got into D and D. So I haven't ever been to any nerd conventions. Uh, so I'm going oh, to nice. I'm going to PAX Australia, and uh, it'll be my first well first major one. I went to um, Armageddon, which is an Auckland based one. So I'm going to PAX, and I'm meeting up with Dead Aussie Gamer and Dread GM and Tales of Pesh and just all of the Australian streamers, Matthew Perkins and Luna, and a whole bunch of people. AJ That's Winters, fun. it's going to be amazing. Uh, we're going to have some fun together. Um, we've, I've got a pre pax meetup uh, planned as well, um, at, like a bar for the people who don't want to buy PAX tickets but still want to meet us. So we're going to all hang out for a day at a bar before PAX, and then we're, and then uh, a bunch of us, Dead, Dead and Drag, uh, Dread and Dag and and AJ, we're we're, we're sharing a um, hotel room, so we're going to be playing some TTRPGs. Dead, uh, Dread's going to be Ooh. bringing a um, Ten Candles. Have you heard of that one? Uh, it's, it's, yeah, he's, yes, we just heard it. Yeah, I heard yeah, of it. Yeah. He's gonna, we're going to be playing some Ten Candles. It's going to be good stuff. Oh, I'm jealous. Dang it. Yes. Can we get Australia? Guess you Australia in October. Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. We're already. Oh. You can do can. Teachers and teachers are known for being able to take to take holidays in the middle of school years. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll thank you very quit. much for joining us. I'll let you get off to your day. Uh, we've gone over time, and it's been an absolute pleasure the whole uh, whole time. Uh, one final time, plug your stuff. Turn, tell people where they can find it. You can find us at uh, D Twenty Deathmatch everywhere: Twitch, YouTube, uh, on Etsy now with our store, um, TikTok, Instagram, Spotify, 
Apple. We know we, everywhere. When I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. And <laughs> everywhere. we'll be back for season three uh, so in uh, OnlyFans. in roughly uh, nine days, uh, uh, eight days, the 24th of July, uh, 9 p.m. Yeah. Eastern. So that'll be the 25th for you Australians. At nice. one. Nice. New Zealanders. New Zealanders. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Excuse Down me. Down unders. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Dag always says it all the time. I give him shit for calling me an Australian all the time. Um, <laughs> wonderful. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you were joining this uh, from the D20 Deathmatch community and you don't know who I am, I'm Robert Hartley GM. I'm a full-time um, dungeon master and TTRPG player and nerd. I do D&D and other things as well. I'm currently learning Pathfinder because I lost a bet. Um, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, put it as a, I put it as a stretch goal on a... Um, on a, uh, a, a a fundraising stream that I did recently uh, that because I give Dag so much shit about Pathfinder all of the time uh, but I don't actually know the game I, uh, I, I said my final stretch goal for the fundraiser was if I get to this amount raised uh, I will learn Pathfinder and run a game for Dag <laughs> and, of course, <laughs> and of course my community went give all of the money let's do it, <laughs> let's do it. so now, I, now I'm learning Pathfinder I'm actually quite enjoying it but don't tell Dag that um secret safe with us on the internet <laughs> all right so uh i will find somebody to raid then and we'll leave it there if you guys got anybody online that you'd like to raid i always give it the option to my um Ooh. my short rest guests captain robert's on as he is 24 hours a day seven days a week uh, but, it is a re <laughs> but it is a rerun i never Swole actually see him live oh hey 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 oh yeah either swole initiative or or casters and castles cool oh, yeah both are great both are Caster great. actually casters and castles we we will be having a crossover thing with them coming up uh, three or four weeks. I just forgot yeah. about that and remembered it. Crossover so. episode. They're going to be Castles coming into our universe. Castles. Let me double check that I'm going to spell it right because you never know with Twitch whether you've it's got underscores and things. Casters and no. castles. No, I'm just gonna, it. Yeah, and it's nothing. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Let's uh, let's raid Cast and Castles. Ba -de -ba -boom. Casters and castles. I got timed out dang it <laughs> thank you for <laughs> shame <laughs> thank you very much for joining us guys uh absolute pleasure to uh, to work with you uh in any occasion uh look forward to our our future d20 death matches again um yeah thank you everybody for being in chat and thank you for the mods for being thanks, here everybody. as well and thank you for your uh, your questions and stuff stick around for the raid thanks I'll for having us time bye hey guess what i've got a discord you can join the community and you get notified whenever I release a new video or a stream and there's a whole bunch of cool people in there chatting all the time.